This month only, Danny B is getting married. And if you sign up for the Patreon, all proceeds go to him as a wedding present. Get in there and sign up for the full year to give Danny B a wedding present. Enjoy the show. No black cats, just straight facts. Triple P certified. Listen, we can talk about odds all day. It doesn't matter what the odds are. It matters what's going to happen. Welcome back. Welcome back to the barracks. Welcome back to headquarters. Welcome back to base camp. You're here. It's the perfect parlay pursuit. Coming off a thrice winning weekend in a row if you're riding Lukey Boy. Danny, Alex, how you guys doing off the heels of a very fun weekend? Dan got married, everybody. Lieutenant Dan Woo! was married to Dan. Ladies, keep your hands off of him. He's off the market. And if you heard the beginning of the show, you will know that we are giving all proceeds in the month of July to Danny B. So we already had some people sign up for a full year membership. That'll cover your plate at the wedding at the <laughs> Danny B. Get in there. Get in for the full year and all money this month. If you're a Daniac, if you're a Dan head, if you're a big time Dan fan, then you will want to sign up this month because all that money is going to go to him. And potentially for the full year, you can keep me and Alex, uh, Dirty Little Paul's off your money for the full year. If you get that year subscription, get yourself that discount. We gave the maximum discount Patreon allowed. And uh, nothing else to be said. I won a shitload of money last weekend. If you were in my betting sheet, if you were in my open bets sheet and you tailed me, you were able to get your hands on some massive winnings, some gigantic underdog plays. Let's get into it. Let's break down UFC 290. It was a fun, exciting, action-packed card. I was only able to catch about half of it because Dan decided to get married, but we were talking about that a few weekends ago. No hard feelings. All good. All good. <laughs> uh, we, we were actually watching the fight on our phone at, at the table a little bit, a little bit, a little, little bit. But by the time the party got oh, good, sorry. by the time the party got good, that's when that's when the good fights that we actually cared about, Jalen Turner versus Dan Hooker, Robbie Lawler versus Nico Price, the, the party was too good to watch those fights, guys. So I had to go back and rewatch them today. I watched them before the show. We'll get into it. We're going to talk all about it. But if you rode me, you know, I'm not one to dig up bones. I'm not one to go back to the block I circled already and burn it to the ground with the fucking few remaining survivors still in it. Uh, but I know you Robert Whitaker fans are already, already <laughs> asking for prayer, and I, and I got my boot right on your neck. And you know, if you know me, you guys know I'm not the one to just press that boot even further and, and say things like Robert Whitaker is never going to be a champion or even get to sniff contention again now. Uh so, so, so he said he's retiring at 36. I don't know how old he is now, but not only did he just get knocked the fuck out, not only is he never going to be a champion again, he won't even be fighting again soon, guys. But who will be fighting soon is the untarnished, unscathed DDP, Driscus Duplessis. I'm not talking Diamond Dallas Page. I'm talking Still Knox, the South African fighter in the UFC, who's going to take on Israel Adesanya, and he's going to knock his ass out too. I hope they give me underdog odds on that. But I was just returning from Dan's wedding, about to go to the after party, and I pull my laptop out, and I and what to my surprise, fight is starting. But the one that I have the most in my heart and in my wallet invested in, Driscus Duplessis versus Robert Whitaker. I pull my laptop out, and in the hotel lobby, I lit that place on fucking fire, dude. When I <laughs> won that fight, I was nobody knew why I was so excited, but I was the most excited person in that hotel. You would have thought I got married, okay? You would have thought I got married that night. You would have thought that I just had my firstborn son that night. The way I was celebrating that hotel lobby. The, the tears of Robert Whitaker fans, they, they, they went up into the atmosphere and they rained down on me, actually, in that lobby. I was sucking them up with a with a nice glass of Chianti and some fava beans. I, I, I spoke on those tears. And it was so and, – and, you know, at that point, I'm up $1,300, and you were too if you were in my open bet sheet. Somewhere around there, we'll, we'll present the screen. We'll share the exact uh, – We'll share the screen here, but guys, you know, Dan, Alex, I haven't let you guys have a breath of air. Like I'm not letting these Robert Whitaker fans get any breath of air either. Uh, you know, what, what do you think? Uh, Ooh. The night. Do you see my, do you see my screen? I see the screen. Oh, I'm yeah, loving yeah. all that green. There you go. You're good right there. We had, we had $200 on DDP money line to win 760. Uh, we had a hundred dollars uh, on DDP by KO uh, 600 back there. So right there, that's 1360. <clears throat> 
And we have one active bet with DDP in it that I parlayed with an underdog, Justin Gaethje, that fights at the end of the month. That's 100 for 800. Um, so I can probably cash that one out, hedge that one out. I'm not going to because I hate DD, uh, I hate Dustin Poirier as much as I hate Robert Whitaker. And I'm going to have a real nice time feasting on, on his fans' tears and winning money while doing it too when that time comes. But here's what I really want to point out, guys. Um, do you wow. know something about these two 12-fight parlays? Yes. Luke, I was just going to say, if it weren't for Jalen Turner, you'd be up. Woo. I don't even want to say the number out loud. Ten thousand dollars. Yeah, it looks like ten. And I actually discovered that moments before the show. Um, I I uh, I actually didn't know that until about an hour ago. Wow. <laughs> because oh I, my I, gosh, I picked Yair, but at the top of that one was Volkanovski. So it wasn't really you know. So I went nine out of or sorry, I went ten out of thirteen on the night. Uh, the incorrect picks that I gave on this podcast were Jalen Turner, Yair Rodriguez, and Nico Price. Now, the, the worst shame I have on my name, I think, at this point now is that I allowed Nico Price to be trouble to be certified. Really, I'm going to chalk it up to what, what legendary gamblers in the community say all the time, like Cody Saftig, like Uncle Weezy. They say, you don't fade a fading fighter or a bad fighter uh, or a fighter you believe to be washed or over the hill or something like that. You don't, you don't fade them with a very bad fighter, right? And Nico Price has proven to us time and time again, he's got the ring IQ of a broomstick. Uh, he's got the ring IQ of a janitor. And actually, I want to take that back in real time because that's actually a, a, that's a disrespect to the profession. There's plenty of genius engineer type people in the janitorial uh, custodial occupation. So you like these apples? Formal apology for me right there in real time. But, you know, Nico Price has no ring IQ. And the best compliment you could give him in that fight is to put the conspiracy hat on and say that he threw that fight <laughs> because it was so pathetic of a performance. It, it almost takes away. I think Robert Whitaker was just mad that he only got 38 seconds in there. I mean, people say that he was, you know, feeling the moment after the fight. I didn't watch his post fight press conference interview, but to me, it looked like he was pissed off that Nico couldn't fucking make it a fight. And actually, who, who likes a fight more than Robert Whitaker? You think he just wanted to get in and out unscathed? Robbie you know? Lawler. Uh, that's what I meant, Rob, Rob Lawler. You, you think you want, you know, he, wants, he doesn't want to get in and out unscathed. He wants to fucking feel the fire in there and, and, and enjoy his last fight. And Nico Price couldn't even, couldn't even fucking. We're, we're only seven minutes in. I won't say what I want to say, but circle back and I'll do what I want to say. Well, I'm going to say what I want to say about this fight. And, um, you know, as happy as I am for my niece's father to win a parlay, so maybe she can get her diaper changed every once in a while, <laughs> I am very disgruntled with one of the members on this podcast, which is my co-host, Lukey C.K., uh, yes, they are the same person, but I am not happy with the way he c- conducted himself at the wedding. Um, I have one leg left of a parlay. I know Luke has at least eight more after that, that he has to get correct to, uh, win his parlay. My last leg is Nico price. What does he say to me? He says, Robbie Lawler is going to knock him out. Uh, Robbie Lawler is going to destroy him. And, um, <clears throat> Come to find out 10, 15 minutes later, my girlfriend is, uh, you know, grabbing my shoulder. Hey, your brother's looking for you. Your brother's looking for you. Oh, what could have happened? What could have went wrong? And he decides to urinate on my grave in front of everybody uh, when I only needed one leg left in that parlay, which would have made me quite a bit of money. I looked back at all my parlays, Luke. Guess what? Uh, Six of them lost by one leg. Six of them lost by one leg, whether it be Yair Rodriguez, whether it be over four and a half in the Volkanovsky Alexander Rodriguez fight, whether it be Jalen Turner, whether it be Nico Price. I still found a way to mess things up. You put the hex on me. You put the Maluk on me. You put your Native American man on me rather than giving, um, you know, your guy Yair Rodriguez the blessings. You, uh, you could have had your Native American man blessing Yair before the fight and telling him native Mexican, will be okay. not native American. He's a native Mexican. Well, you know, it's North America, South America. It's all America. So yeah, same, yeah. same. No, it was Aztec, Aztec, native Mexican. Yeah. Same, same. Okay. Beautiful. American, but North so, America, so what, 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 what pyramid was he, what, what was he right. training at? Like a, right. was he training at a Mexican pyramid or a native yeah. American pyramid, Luke? There might be some, which people, one? there might be some people here that don't even know what we're talking about. So yes, I had a vision um, a, a, a Aztec man came to me in a vision. Well, I'm gonna let you finish after you let me finish. Well, let me just say this: 
You could have been helping Yair. Instead, you were putting the Maluk on me. You ruined my night. You ruined everything. If, if I didn't see such a beautiful ceremony and I had so much fun at a reception, my whole night would have been in shambles. Thank God Dan decided to get married. All right, well, listen, let me ask you this, big shot. Why didn't you just take a chunk of fucking money and put it on Robert Whitaker so that no matter what happened, you would have you would have either broke even and won all your losses back and then or, or stop you're saying Lawler. Robert Whitaker. Robert Lawler. I'm sorry, Robert Lawler. Robert Lawler. <laughs> <laughs> Ruthless Robert Lawler. He's a grown man. He's retired. You don't need to call him Robbie anymore. We call him Robbie. <laughs> Treat him with some respect. So what I'm trying to say well, is – Well, at least call, listen, call him by his name, name, Luke. Don't you, be calling him Rob, you, Robert you, Whitaker. Listen, I, I hate to do what I did, and I am sorry that I gloated, and I am sorry that I – but I did have Robert Whitaker in a big money parlay at that point. Or, <laughs> God, it there. I did have Robert Lawler in a big money parlay at that point. However, you know, I, I kind of told you it was going to happen. You could have hedged out. Robbie was an underdog. You could have bet on him. You could have hedged out. You could have done a million different things. You behaved negligently like I did. when you I. You told me a lot of things would happen. And then I took your bet going into the last three fights. Yeah. I took your bet. I took Pantoja, Volkanovsky, Driscus Duplessis. And guess what? Your man couldn't even last in there for you three and a half rounds. Oh, Alex, with bro, all you had to do was just not get greedy. With Yair, you got a little greedy with Yair. You should have just said, "No, I said I'm riding you, you to the you promise." Two underdogs in a row to, to go with Yair. And listen, let me say this: so I had a vision, and as Tech Man came to me in a vision, and he showed me through the smoke that came out of his mouth. He showed me Yair head kicking Volkanovski, and in the vision, I said Herb Dean was the referee, didn't I? You did. I did. And Herb Dean was the referee in that fight. That was the only reason I didn't hedge out. It's not rocket right. surgery. He usually had <laughs> the only reason I didn't hedge out. It was because I was like, well, Herb Dean's the ref in this fight. I mean, it, the vision's playing out as I saw it. And Yair did kick him in the head several times, guys. Uh, so what I think happened was, obviously, the future's always changing. And we have many different timelines. I think there is probably a timeline. Macy line. Barber hasn't changed once in her career. There's a timeline where Yair did kick him in the head and, and he went down and he got knocked out. This was We aren't living in that timeline right now, guys. So... Um, but Hey, you know, I was right about Pantoja and underdog. I was right about Driscus two plus C's and underdog. Um, now here's where I was wrong. Jalen Turner. And as you can see, I would be $10,000 richer if Jalen Turner had a little bit more gumption and <laughs> work ethic in him. He's, uh, he's now somebody I loathe. I do not. Like <laughs> him I loved him. Now I loathe him. Uh, I, I will never bet on him again. I can't stand him. I hate him. And can I interject? I did you see the fight? His arm was broken and his orbital was broken. Did you see orbital. the fight? Did you see the fight? I saw like the last round. Ah, I heard it was close. I heard he was, you the know, last was round, the, the last round, a bloodied and battered Dan Hooker was on top of a very athletic and unscathed Jalen Turner. Who was he was unscathed? Back. I'm saying compared to Dan Hooker, who looked like he had been in a car accident. Well, how could he be unscathed if he lost the fight? Look, Dan Hooker came in looking like Macy Chiasen. He dyed his hair and he fucking got a tattoo. <laughs> I would make the same bet again with Jalen Turner missing weight by 10 pounds because at the end of the day, I didn't think that one was going to make a damn bit of difference in the fight. I thought Dan Hooker was having a midlife crisis. There, I said it. I thought Dan Hooker was in the middle of a dramatic midlife crisis where he's dyeing his hair, he's getting tattoos, he's literally doing 16-year-old girl traits, and Jalen Turner fumbled the bag so desperately and so poorly. He, he fumbled the bag. That's the term the kids are using nowadays. I'll, I'll use adult terms. Jalen Turner absolutely slipped on a banana poorly. peel. A golden opportunity and i wanted to talk about this so i actually wrote this in the private chat guys here are some examples of situations like this in the past that i think this one was akin to magni versus roe lawler versus price dan hooker versus nazarat hopcross dan hooker mm -hmm. versus dustin poirier in the reverse holloway versus allen holloway versus cater right it's a situation where the old wily veteran makes the fight more unpredictable chaotic and harder than the uh, young up-and-comer thinks it's going to be and the young up-and-comer. Also, when I saw Embedded and I saw Jalen Turner watching fireworks, I was like, I'm turned off. Dan and Luke, and mean, Luke, on top of that, during the fireworks, he says, yeah, wake up's not hard. I'm actually feeling a lot more energized than I've ever felt before a fight. And then he misses weight. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, dude, Dan Hooker and them were like literally asking like while they were trading, like, so what's for the July? And they're like, yeah, it's Independence Day. And they explain, he goes, all right, cool. And then they run a fucking circuit and do a train. And it's like, yeah, that's what you should be doing a couple days before a fight. But they're not um, American, Luke. That, they're not he, American. He like, he's like, I just love fireworks. And he's watching the fireworks. Like, wow. I was like, I missed fireworks on 4th of July to get a better night's sleep for work the next day. I did. 
I don't fucking have to fight. I just have to fucking stare at a laptop. He has to fight. You know what I mean? He should have not been watching the fireworks. First, he's in Australia petting the animals at the zoo. Now, he's in America watching the fireworks. Hey, you like pretty lights? You like furry stuffed animals? Why don't you go play in the fucking kids' corner then, Jalen? Because you're done here with the adults. You're done. Um, You're done. So, <laughs> I can't stand him. Dan Hooker earned a little bit of respect back of all the respect he lost from just being an absolute uh, weirdo, dyeing his hair and getting tattoos, but also, like, you know, you throw him in there with Makachev, he taps out. You throw him in there with DP, Dustin Poirier, can't seal the deal. Where else has he disappointed us? You know what I mean? Plenty of other places. Uh, Hooker. Danny Rapino is one to uh, really Danny frustrate Rapino. you at a lot of times. And he's, he frustrated me just now. I, I'm about $10,000, dude. That would have been exactly how much money I needed, believe it or not. To like really make a difference in my life, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I won thirteen hundo, but thirteen hundo really—that's just that's covering expenses. The way I move, Jack. The way I fucking cut through these streets—that's just covering my fucking gas these days, dude. You know what I mean? So the way, so the way you got to look at Dan Hooker now is the same way you look at Sean Strickland. Whatever Luke picks, pick the opposite every single time. Mm. Always. I really picked picked him hard as an underdog against DP Dustin Poirier, and he blew that. I know. Night I picked Mickey Gall against fucking. Pablo Sanchez, Mike Perry, and uh, dude, Mike Perry beat his ass, and what's his name beat Hooker's ass, and it was bad. And I was equal. That was where I, that was the first night where I said to myself, maybe I don't know fucking anything because I was so confident that those two were gonna win that night, and both of them got smoked out. And now forever, I have to look at them sideways. Like you guys lost so bad, you made me question myself. Like I had nothing to do with it, and I'm out here thinking bad about myself because of your actions. And I have to reconsider my whole worldview and how I think about how things stack up in the world. And you did that to me. Thanks a lot. And you cost me money. So it's like, and people would say, no, Luke, they didn't cost you money. Listen, yes, they did. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Luke, uh, on a real note, what did you guys think about Israel Asanya acting a fool in the middle Ooh. of the cage with DDP? Acting a fool. That's what it, exactly it was. He was acting the fool. Uh, but I, listen, I think he's elevating DDP. <laughs> In his asshole? Yeah. Was that, was that the trick? Excuse my language. Excuse my language. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they dropped two F-bombs in the first seven minutes. Uh, but no, um, I think it greatly benefits DDP. It's elevating him. It's making him look like the baby face. So it's all good. I think it's promoting the fight very well. Uh, but yeah, I mean, as far as, uh, you know, the, how is he presenting himself? He looks like a damn idiot. He looks like a damn fool. Um, and Africa has nothing to do with race. You know, he is from the African continent, DDP. He does breathe the African air 24 seven. He is the only African, uh, presumably would be champion if he wins, uh, that actually lives there 24 seven. So he said nothing wrong. And, uh, you know, Adesanya just looking like a baby, looking like a fool. But I did love Adesanya's shirt, although I do support his girlfriend. And I, I think his girlfriend deserves Uh, all the money. The shirt that says he uh, is not your bank, is what his shirt said. He is not your bank. I don't think it had I anything. It. I don't think it had anything. To do I think it probably had something to do with that. He is the petty know. king. He calls himself Mister Petty all the time. You don't think he wore a shirt to spite his girlfriend, seeing him on TV, so, okay. seeing well, that he's getting his nails done by another woman? Now? <laughs> well, let me say this. So, I agree with you, Dan. I think Israel is kind of digging himself into a hole and backing himself into a corner that he can't really get out of because at the end of the day. Um, at the end of the day, he does live and train in New Zealand at a very famous, and he is Chinese and right? America at, at a very famous New Zealand gym with a very famous New Zealand team. And Driscus is tr- really what he was saying the entire time was a more so an homage and a uh, uh, forward to his team and saying like my, I have a small gym in South Africa, yeah, with right, Tom and right? Simon and me and him are representing South Africa and we're going to go home to South Africa. And he said, and like, Africa as a whole, you left totally, Africa because you don't have any gyms there. No totally, training park. And DDP is not Chinese on the inside. Okay. Uh, well, that, yeah. that's, and the thing is, here's, here's the other thing. This is a sport and he is an athlete and athletes are competitive. And every single time for the last three or four years that he's had to hear, Oh, the three Kings of Africa is Israel, Adesanya, yeah. Maru Usman and uh, Francis Francis. Ngannou. And in his mind, he's going, yeah, where are they? I'd love to. Uh, I'd love to see them. I don't see them here in Africa. One of the guys trains at MMA Factory in Paris, France, and then he went to Eric Nixick in Las Vegas. The other guy is, by all, by all uh, accounts, like 
an American citizen who lives in America and has an American family and is a typical American man. Like, you know, Akmar Usman is in, it trains in America. You know what I mean? Marty uh, from Nebraska. You, 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 could, you could say them to Nebraska. You could say them to Florida. You could say them to Colorado. But Colorado. one place that he doesn't train is where just because people see his train. So I think that, you know, it's it's low-hanging fruit and, and uh, lazy to kind of take that route with it. But at the end of the day, um, I like I like the gym pride, national pride, uh, hometown pride element. Continental pride. Yeah, of, of any kind of combat sport and any sport, really. Any sport is about regional – pride it's about taking like uh, the philadelphia eagles where are they they're in philadelphia jack that's why we've that's why we have <laughs> yeah, why, we, yeah. why are you going to these biden like, tendencies have you been watching a lot of duck dynasty lately and i keep saying jack here i'm sorry but listen skip we get, uh, <laughs> listen <laughs> fat listen fat <laughs> yeah, we don't need, look you're fat we don't need to get into this too much uh we can kind of move, move on but to your point uh i think that this is Israel was vi- either drunk and or both. He was either drunk and or visibly emotional uh, in that exchange with Tris. Because I didn't see it after the fight because I was too busy literally running sprints around the fucking Marriott Hotel lobby making a fool of myself, acting a damn fool in the Marriott Hotel lobby. I was way too busy doing that, yelling at people who had nothing to do with anything. Uh, I was too busy doing that to even hear that exchange or see it. I didn't even know what happened. I had to go back and rewatch it. So... When I saw it, I was like, Israel's like, his lips are quivering. He's like shaking. Like he's like worked himself into quite a tizzy. And <laughs> the reality is that's not good. That's where Robert Whitaker was when he got his ass knocked out by Israel. Right, right, right. Yes. You know what I mean? He had worked himself into a bit of a tizzy too. And it could either bring out a very disciplined, focused, good Israel, if he somehow converts his energy and switches it, or if it goes the way it's going – I think it's going to bring out a very reckless, frustrated, uh, dominatable Israel Adesanya. And I think Driscus can frustrate and dominate him for the entirety of the fight. And he's going to be able to get his hands around his legs, pick him up, slam him on the ground. Dude, Driscus is a wide body, dude. He's he's so hard to, like, imagine, like, how you can beat him at this point. And it's crazy because, like, even before the fight, he was giving Robert Whitaker all the respect. He said, this is my championship yeah. right here. This is the most well-rounded guy in the division, and this is somebody who's going to be a real test for me. And then after this fight, he was like, if I get Israel Adesanya on the ground for two seconds, you let Alex Pierre take you down, and he's a kickboxer. You let me get you to the ground, it's over. It's it's done, son. You're not getting up. You're not you're not going to walk over to your corner. There's nothing that will happen besides me finishing you if I get you to the ground. Well, I'll say this. Uh, I don't think DDP is as great of a wrestler as people think based on the wrestling I saw against uh, Darren Till. Remember that? Like he he was barely winning exchanges against Till in the wrestling department. Uh, so I think that Adesanya is a better grappler. And he had 10% of his breath at that point. No, yeah. It's not even true because he got him to the cage and was just unloading punches like 60 to nothing in that first round with complete cage control. Okay. Well, if we're, if we're talking about like going against the the cage, not on the ground, not on the mat. Like, also I think Darren Till was training with Hamza Jamayev at the time. And the only area that Darren Till needs to work on is his wrestling pretty much because he's a competent enough striker compared to a lot of the guys in the division. So it's like, Darren Till is not as easy as he once was to get to the ground. And that's another thing about um, Hamza Shemaev. Another person he's trained with has now fallen to a fighter that he should have beaten in Jalen Turner. Yeah, that is true. Hamza Shemaev is a locker room cancer. cancer. We need to get him away from uh, – uh, we got to get him away. Or maybe it's just Darren Till is so much that he bled over. He gave the locker room herpes <laughs> to fucking Hamza. Now he's got – he's given them to fucking Jalen Turner. Uh, Jalen Turner – the fact that he was so like right after the fight, like buddy buddy with Hooker and and then taking pictures with him in the hospital and like like not not being like oh, you hate that oh, you I hate, hate that. that I hate that split decision. The only one who had my back was Adelaide Bird. Shout out to Adelaide Bird. The only <laughs> one. That's how you know you lost that shit, Jalen. That's how you know it wasn't close. That's how you know it was unanimous that Adelaide Bird was the only one who actually gave it to you. Yeah, go put that on a T-shirt. Adelaide Bird thinks I won. That's and then if, if that's if that's your uh, if that's going to be the route you take. But yeah, no. Dan Hooker with one eye and one arm was able to whoop Jalen Turner's ass. That's what the tombstone is going to say for fucking ever in his graveyard, uh, in my world. So 
Jalen Turner, you're dead to me. Uh, let's move on. And I hate to do it. If this hurts me more than hurts him, he doesn't even know who I am. I've gotten to know and love the tarantula, and now I have to fucking go out in the in the yard. I have to go back out in the yard, and I have to tell him, "Folks, the rabbits, George, the rabbits, George." And I have to dig a hole, and I have to write on the tombstone, "Jalen Turner couldn't close the deal against Macy Chiasin uh, on this day, the day Dan got married." Also. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 you know he's he's one loss away from losing his last leg as a tarantula you know they have eight legs he has seven losses now so he, if he gets one more he's he's a legolas and i'm give not talking damien about maya. no lord of the rings give him damien maya to take that last leg home with him <laughs> maybe i will take one of his legs home with me remember that okay let's move on so rodriguez couldn't get the the one kick he needed he got a lot of kicks off but not the one that we needed Volkanovski is a different animal. He's a short king. I love him. Love him so much. Not even mad that he got that one done. I would have won an extra five grand if Rodriguez won, just because I had uh, a parlay that I threw in when I was at the wedding. I didn't even get make it. I didn't, wasn't even able to put it on my open bet sheet, guys. So don't get mad at me. It didn't win. Don't worry. But it was Tetsuya Tiara plus four twenty by decision. Uh, it was Lawler, and then it was like Pantoja, and then it was Rodriguez. So four mm-hmm. fight parlay. It was like ten to win like twenty five hundred dollars. And uh, then there was like a bunch of other solo bets, solo bet on Rodriguez, solo bet on Rodriguez by knockout. So I put my money where my mouth was. I, I saw the vision. I thought it could happen. And I, I bet it. But we lost. But even when we lost, sometimes you lose and you really win. So I went 10 out of 13. Alex went 7 out of 13. Dan went 7 out of 13. Trilby certified picks went 5 out of 7. The only two we got wrong there were Jalen Turner and Nico Price. Uh, you know, but we're not really going to talk about that one ever again. I uncertified Nico Price before – the, the fight I picked Robbie Lawler officially in my head and I bet him um, and I bet him in the Patreon. So I, I kind of want to untroll. We sort of, I'm going to leave it for the records. It'll say five out of seven, but just know I am remorseful and repentant for Nico price. The biggest cut him, cut Nico price. There we go. Cut Nico price. Uh, somebody can do the timestamp in the comments, 27 minutes in uh, the first person, first time I called for somebody to be cut, cut Nico price, cut, don't, don't cut Jalen Turner. Give him uh give give him just a hard opponent that is gonna knock him out. That's what I want for him. Give him uh give well, what weight class is, is Jalen Turner in? That's one seventy no one fifty five. Fifty five. All right, so let's give Jalen Turner at one fifty five. There's not even anybody good in the whole division. Who would knock him out brutally at one fifty five? Who's that? I don't know. Jalen Turner. Who would knock him out brutally at 155? Drew Dober. Give him Drew Dober. That is exactly (laughs) Drew Dober will destroy Jalen Turner. Oh, my gosh. Okay, yeah. Drew Dober versus Jalen Turner. That's the fight that we want. And uh, let's put Jalen Turner in there, though, against someone else, and we'll move Drew in on short notice. Yeah, even better. You know what I mean? We'll we'll get Jalen versus uh, – we'll, we'll, we'll sneak him. We'll say we're giving you Joe Selecki. Yes. Okay? And then we'll nah, – now nah, you don't got the submission artist. You got Drew Dober, ha- hands, head, and face of steel. <laughs> of stone and steel, of granite. Uh, but he wouldn't take that. We, we got to give him somebody like uh, Patty Pimblett because it's like, okay. Oh, that's- Patty Pimblett's – not gonna Patty Pimblett, no, and then Drew Dober on short notice. I'm saying he wouldn't take the Joe Selecki one up front. All right. Well, He's guys, in Paradigm guys, Sports. Uh, you know, other other fights that are good that we're not going to talk about really, Bo Nickel. I want to just say, Robert Whitaker and Bo Nickel, both getting 30-second knockouts, both wrestlers. I've always Robert said, Lawler. <laughs> Robert Lawler, yeah, sorry. Ruthless Robert Lawler, Bo Nickel, Bo, Bo German Nickel. Uh, he <laughs> and Lawler, they both – Got 38 second knockouts. They're both wrestlers, guys. Isn't this funny? Both wrestlers, and they get the knockouts. Uh, I've always said wrestling's a lot like boxing, where you have to put your feet to do an offensive move, um, where you have to move your head to avoid your opponent's offensive move, whether it be a collar tie or hand fighting, things of that nature. Um, the movements and the reflexes that you need and the foot position you need to execute in wrestling are very similar to boxing. If you're a boxer, consider taking wrestling. If you're a wrestler, consider taking boxing. Uh, but most of all, you know, the, the, I just love it. I love, I love seeing the wrestlers just go in there and just knock guys out. 
Because if you know wrestlers, high school wrestlers, you know in street fights, they're not out there wrestling. A lot of the high school wrestlers I knew would never wrestle in street fights. They would just fucking <laughs> throw hands like Chuck Liddell. Like, they would just, you know what I mean? Like, there's a very, there's a very uh, great thing to be said about the safety of knowing somebody can't put you on your back. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. And and that's like, and that's exactly what Chuck Liddell did. He said, yeah, I was a good wrestler, but I loved kickboxing. And my wrestling was just like the backbone to make sure that I could kickbox people and do what I liked to do. Um, but Val Woodburn and Bo Nickel, very impressive. Yes, sure. It was on short notice. Val is getting another chance in the UFC, but this guy had like, five first round knockouts in his seven professional fights and to get knocked out in 39 or to knock him out in 38 seconds, 39 seconds, whatever it was is super impressive because I, I, I heard Bo talking about it after the fight. He was like, I thought he was going to, uh, you know, try to bum rush me. Cause that was kind of what I thought was the only path for victory for him. But when he didn't, I just realized what he was doing wrong. And it's a testament to everybody I'm working with down at uh, American Top Team. Yep. Great fight. I caught that one, uh, the knockout. And, you know, he was faking the takedowns and keeping him worried about it. And like you said, it's like if, if you uh, are too, if you're if, if you're not a, a multidimensional athlete, you're not going to be able to have the confidence to execute kind of like what Yair was saying about just being able to attack from. But, you know, one problem with Yair is that he doesn't do enough to get back up when he's on his butt. You know what I mean? Anytime I see a guy doing this shit, punching people in the head like this, like from their back, clapping ears and shit, like Donkey Kong. I can't stand that shit, dude. I can't stand that. That's, the, that's, I mean, if you're elbowing and, and you're using the elbows to like frame and create space and get yourself out, that's one thing, but just right. this shit and, or body punches from the back is, but nonetheless, that doesn't win a fight. Wall. That doesn't win a fight. Like we saw it with Gregor Musasi versus Mo Muhammad Lawal. Like, I thought Gregor Musasi won that fight just based off damage from the back. But that does not win a fight. We've seen it time and time again. We're not going to win a fight off of our back. All right. Well, let's get into it. Uh, We we already broke down Holm versus Silva, guys. We did the full episode, uh, top to bottom. And those picks are in the, uh, you know, they're they're in. Alonzo Minifield, great submission. Jimmy Crew absolutely sucks. You should cut Jimmy Crew second cut of the night. <laughs> cut, cut crew and cut price and we're going to give Jalen Turner Drew Dober Dan that's what we decided <laughs> Jalen ooh that'd be a good one have they fought before I don't know I feel like they've fought before but I, think they, I don't think, I think they have two right it seems like a fight that has been made but hasn't but we're gonna that do would be good Go Selecki versus Jalen just to entice Jalen like oh a submission artist okay cool I'll take that and then we're going to pull Joe last minute and put Drew Dober in the hey night. man Take a guy who fought on the main card of International Fight Week, give it to Joe Selecki, boom. Joe Selecki submits his ass and is skyrocketed to the top 10 of 155, best division in the UFC. That would be a hell of a thing to watch. I, 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 yeah. I know Joe, Joe would submit him. He would take that tarantula leg right off him. But here's the thing. I want him to be knocked out cold, you know what I mean, and uh, multiple shots after. So we got to get somebody like Drew Dober who could do that, you know what I mean? Oh, you want Jalen Turner to be knocked out? Well, we're either going to cut Jalen Turner or we're going to give him like Hamza Chimaya at 155. Like, we got to, you know what I mean? Listen, gonna- let's be benevolent to Joe, get him a good fight, get him something that's going to get some name value and a winnable fight and something that's going to catapult him. Let's let's be benevolent to our boy here. Come on now. Yep. Joe Select. 28, 28 years old. Let's see. Did he fight? No, he fought Matt Favola. He lost to Matt Favola by decision. Uh, yeah, dude. This yeah, we, he has not fought Drew Dober. Uh, Drew Dober. We got to get him in there with Drew Dober, um, if we can. So let's call for that. But yo, he has he has four straight submission wins, Jalen Turner, before this fight. So that's what I'm saying. He not was, worried about it. Not worried about it. Joe, will, he would Joe his, will take his like, ass. We got to entice him with the submission versus submission guy. You're like, oh, okay, yeah, it'll be good, great, great to test myself against Joe Selecki and his submission skills. Psych, you get Drew Dober, bitch. Luke just <laughs> wants to watch him lose brain cells. Exactly. Because <laughs> even if he wins against Drew Dober, Drew Dober ain't going anywhere for 15 minutes. You know what I mean? Like, he's right. going gonna, he's gonna to hurt him even if he wins. All right. We already broke down Holly Holm versus Marv Buena Silva. Go check that episode out. If you want to know our revision picks, the picks that we're going to revise and give a second look at, we're going to do that in the Patreon. That's how you can support Dan. That's how you can give uh, $100 to Dan if you go and subscribe for the full year. Give him 
money. It's all going to him for this month for his wedding gift. Congrats to Dan. Congrats on the wedding. And listen, for those who have already signed up for the Patreon, thank you so much. It means a lot to me. VCR Repairman, shout out to you. You are the man indeed. Uh, but yeah. VCR listen. Repairman, always in the Discord, always in the Always, comments. always. Thank you so much. He bet $100 on the Philadelphia Phillies at underdog odds against the Tampa Bay Rays. The, the Phillies fucking swept those Rays. They fucking put those Rays in a bucket and deep fried them. And that man won $100. He took that money. He bought a year of membership in the Patreon. Now he's in, locked and loaded for the full year. And Dan is going to reap those rewards. He's going to take home $100. Very, well, and you know the kind. only money he's making right now is off gambling. Nobody's really in the business of getting their VCR repaired these days. Nobody's really <laughs> using VCRs anymore. So we need to make sure we win VCR Repairman more money. And we're going to. With Tom Aspinall versus whom? Marcin Tybura? They had to give him an opponent he could beat, right? Because all these British guys are such money makers, such cash cows for the UFC, selling out the arena every time, selling 12 to 15 beers per person in that arena mm -hmm. every single time. Those lush, drunk Londoners out there drinking the house dry, drinking skiffles, quite literally, drinking the whole, the whole gaff full. The, the whole gaff is... is drank dry every time one of these Londoners fight. And we got Tom Aspinall with Molly McCann in the co-main. You think, you think they're going to have enough, Dan? I think we might need to send in a few barrels of Sam Adams just 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 as reserves, you know what I mean? Just to, I just think so. Back up. But uh, is this one in London? We got LaRoe Murphy, we got Nathaniel Wood, yeah. we got Paul Craig. We, got we don't need another revolution. Oh, they're going to be dumping that Sam Adams Roberts. in the yeah. river. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We got all the usual suspects on this card. So this is one we got to break down. We got to get into, but if you want to support Dan, give him a wedding present, join that Patreon, and then we'll take you through Holly Holm versus Mar Vita Silva yet again. A couple of good fights on that one. You know, we got the Iron Turtle, we got the Gun Bagdazarian. <clears throat> so we'll we'll re break down that one. Talk about we'll talk about Terrence McKinney's bum ass on that episode. We'll, we'll trash we'll trash and disrespect him uh, on that episode. So go check that out uh, on through the paywall. But for now, full card main, main card and prelims: Tom Aspinall versus Marcin Tybura. Danny, you're the guest of honor. You're the maid of honor. Why don't you go ahead and uh, take this one from the top? I'm going to go. All I'm right. Gonna... We're going from the top. Tom Aspinall, Marcin Tybora. Man, I really don't see a world where uh, Tybora wins this one. Uh, Aspinall has proven the boxing skills more than anything. But even the jujitsu, you know, you hear the rumors. This guy is supremely sick off of uh, you know the grappling exchanges, whether on the bottom or top, he can get it done anywhere he pleases through the jujitsu, which you know, Tybora, you know, has proven that uh he's he's pretty pretty adept himself. Um the difficulty for me in seeing Tybora winning this one is when it's on the feet. Um Aspinall is just such a such a pro when it comes to the striking uh you know, anything less than an injury as he had sustained in his last fight. <clears throat> I don't see him losing this one. I'm not sure what the line is. Uh, Alex, do you know what the line is on this uh, this main event fight? I do not think it's out yet. I can't imagine that it's anything less than, like, minus 400 for Aspinall. I mean, he's got to be juiced up to the gills. Deservedly so. I'm taking Aspinall on this one. Not even really a hedge opportunity for me. I, I just I see no path for victory for Tybora. And I've been a, a Tybora defender in the past. You know, he does have skills, but I, I you know, Aspinall, he, he's got it everywhere this thing goes. So uh, it could be Tom Aspinall. No hedge on this main event. Yeah, I'm going to take Tom Aspinall as well. Although I respect Marcin Tabura, I think he's a great fighter. I think he has amazing wrestling. Uh, you can't get it done against Volkov. I think Tom Aspinall kind of runs through you. Dan, two of Tom Aspinall's three losses. One, a legal 12 to 6 elbow. <laughs> so he got DQ'd. Mm -hmm. And then the knee. John Jones esque. Yes. So, um, and then one time he got heel hooked. But. Marcin Dyberry ain't going for no daggum heel hooks. No. And I think Tom Aspinall knows how to defend a heel hook now. Uh, Tom Aspinall all the way. Yeah. Dan, you really called that line pretty well. I'm seeing on FanDuel, which tends to have some uh, more juicy lines, uh, Tom Aspinall minus 480. Yeah. So you said four all to right. one. We're almost five to one here uh, already, way early. So you know by the time you know people find out that this fight's happening – Minus 600, minus 700 is what this is probably going to settle in at. Yeah. Um, and that's actually the only fight, at least on uh, at least on FanDuel, that I'm seeing odds for for that weekend. So maybe 
drip. Lukey's a turncoat. <laughs> Lukey the turncoat. You're you're all up on FanDuel now. You used to be DK uh, Loyals. I was DK Loyal, but I don't know. FanDuel just makes it a little bit easier to deposit and withdraw. They do they're it's a little faster and the user experience for me is a little bit better. I don't mind like losing with them, you know. <laughs> uh like as much, I guess. So uh but I, I'm I'm actually logging into DraftKings right now to check. Cause I'm not, you know, I'm not opposed to DraftKings, they're trying to get me back. They got, you know, they got I see they even got a uh, deposit bonus waiting right here for me. So <laughs> they, want me. they want me back but I, any you know one of these books needs to come and, and try to do a deal with us i think that we've we, we've been in the game now for three years and we got over a thousand subscribers on youtube and i just think somebody needs to come drop off the bag like what when's when's the money train gonna roll in when, when's he gonna when's the man gonna pull me into the room and say come in here boy have a cigar you're gonna go far you know what i mean i'm ready to sign on the dotted line i'm ready to give up like 75% of this podcast to you and and just sell us down the river. Like, I don't care at all. Like, let's go. I just want to get in the game. You know what I mean? Let's let's make a deal. 360 deal? I'll do a 360 deal. You know what 360 deal is, Dan? Uh, I do not. What well, is I'm going to sign you up for one. Sound good? Uh, is, it, maybe, is it like you only make you. money off of you. merch or Trust me. Like all right. That. So I'm going to sign Dan to a 360 deal. Alex, you're, you're 362. We're going to 360. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not what? signing to a 360 deal. I'm not getting, <laughs> I'm not getting well, trapped like these rappers. Hold on. Can I say this? Why are we all wearing black shirts today? Did we all call each other? I mean, blue, we're blue. all the men in black. Men in black. I like that. This men must be a sign. What is the sign for this? What is the sign for this in this upcoming card? This has to be something. Somebody who wears the black hat. Somebody that someone who wears the black like, hat. Someone whose last name is black. Someone who's black. I don't know. Something's gotta be happening. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Mine's blue. I'm trying to tell you, the shirt's blue. It's not blue. It, <laughs> the video camera says black. The video camera. It was says never black. blue. It's not blue now. <laughs> it wasn't blue before. Okay, please. <laughs> all right. Well, we all do have. Uh, well, actually, Alex does not. I was gonna say we all do have nice haircuts fresh off the wedding, but sadly, Alex. Decided. I look pretty good, dude. My hair held up the whole time, even in the humidity, dude. Yeah, he hair... was complimented. He was complimented. I... Who's that uh, good-looking new actor guy that everyone saw? Pablo Picasso or oh, Pedro oh, Pasquale. Yeah. yeah, you were yeah. you compared to him. I heard. How did you hear that? Oh, the grapevine, you know. Ah. The groom The groom is in the grapevine. Yeah, yeah. Somebody said I looked like Pedro Pasquale. You were, you were talking about different universes earlier. You really glossed over that you – really fucked up on that yaya rodriguez tip that you got <laughs> that indian man was that indian man he was trying to get you in the casino to waste your money <laughs> I mean, the, the, on the reservation i think yes the gamble uh that might have been what happened it might have been an advertisement late on long <laughs> <laughs> it was a vision but it was a vision of, out of my own eyes that i saw while i was just up too late on, on the internet um no I did the Mohican think- Sun. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't an Aztec <laughs> man. It was the Mohicans. I I did pick DDP, a big underdog. I did pick him by knockout, five to one. I did pick him. Uh, All right, we don't need to go over that again. But you keep glossing over the fact that your Native American man lied to you. Wait, I did also pick Brandon Moreno to lose because he, he sold the white man astray. No, 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 no. I told everyone that the cannibal was going to eat. That the cannibal was going to eat. He did eat. He ate, uh, and that was amazing, guys. I gave you. Let's really think about this. Alex Pereira beats Israel Adesanya in kickboxing two times. Then they fight in MMA, and he's an underdog. And I say, guys, what is the definition of insanity? Repeating the same thing over and over and expecting different results. We have to give this man his credit. He has proven to us he's capable of defeating this man. Let's go with Alex Pereira. We go with Alex Pereira. He wins. Then Manchi. Then I go with uh, Pantoja for the same reason. He's like, guys, he, he's done this twice. He's going to do it again, and he does as an underdog for us now. Now – Here's the biggest trick of this podcast is that sometimes we do a switcheroo. And now next time we might not pick Pantosia because we didn't uh, necessarily truly be certified. They're not going to fight again. What? They're not going to fight again. It's three nothing. Izzy and Pereira did. And that was and, – and they asked Dane. Yeah, but this is all there. on tough. Yeah, we all asked Dane, MMA. They asked Dane in the press conference. He said, he said, how do you not make that fight again? It was one of the greatest fights of all time. Because okay. it was, and you missed it, but it was great. I watched it. <laughs> I, while I was watching it in the hotel lobby on my laptop by myself, 
I was reacting in such a way to what was happening on the street that a group of youths, uh, youths, a group youths. Of youths, I saw those youths. They, they gathered they were... around me. They gathered around me, and uh, a couple, one of them was particularly interested. He was a seventeen-year-old boy. Shout out to him. He was in the basketball tournament the next What's day. What's his name? What's his uh, birth What's sign? His name, and I'm not going to give him a minor's name on the podcast, but. These youths were there on good reason. They were there in the hotel playing ball. They were hooping. Shout out to their summer league. Um, they were there from Virginia. We had a nice conversation about Allen Iverson. I told them Allen Iverson was from Virginia. Ah. I was like, you know, Allen Iverson on the greats. He's from Virginia. We talked about AI. They they had they paid respect. They paid homage. Was it because he was wearing an Allen Iverson shirt? I think I ran into these same you know, youths. Well, you know, we have some boys <laughs> up in, we get some boys coming up into Pennsylvania from Virginia way, and they, when they're in town, you just got to make sure you check in and, and pay your respects to the to the great Allen Iverson. If you're going to make your way through Pennsylvania, you just got to make sure you check in and let and everybody Kobe, know. great Pennsylvanian. Just kiss the ring. Just kiss the ring. Just kiss, That's all we ask. Kiss the ring. And uh, so bottom line is they were very respectful to Allen Iverson, so it was all good. I let them watch the fight with me on the laptop. And, you know, we were having a good time. And one of the boys actually said, he goes, because uh, I said, I was like, guy in the, you know, yellow uh, or whatever, is he's actually got two wins already over the guy in the green. And guy in the, he was like, just like Izzy. I was like. Just like Izzy, ah. I was like, just like Izzy with prayer, exactly. He's like, he's like, yeah, because he's the champ, and now this guy who's challenging has two wins on him already. I was like, exactly, man. Exactly. Wait, hold up, is this guy a subscriber on our podcast now? You know, what, they, just... they were minors. I didn't, I didn't even tell them. Oh, that. you know what? I didn't even. Good on you, good on you. If they were minors, show my year year old, and I was you're not like, allowed to gamble if you're under 18 years of age. So good. But on you, you influence them like crazy by just winning a bunch of money. It looked really cool, and then yeah. So I, I showed them the active parlay I had that was ten dollars to win twenty seven hundred or something with Yair Rodriguez at the top, and they went to bed before that fight. So they they probably thought I won that too. <laughs> wow, for a high school kid, I mean that's like yeah, yeah, Luke, you, a lot. You are a terrible influence. Don't try to act like uh, not promoting the podcast was the right thing to do. You already promoted gambling to these children for no reason. <laughs> Look how much money you could win. <laughs> so easy to sign up. Sorry, you guys. just gave them their have a cigar moment. <laughs> Dude, I I, I should have I should have been like, so who's gonna win this high school basketball game tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> what are the odds? Hey, what team was that boy I saw in the elevator with the broken ankle on? <laughs> <laughs> Who did he play for? <laughs> Who will be without him tomorrow in the big game? No, I don't ever want any insider training information at all, to be honest, because that's fucking illegal. Um Luke, you need to you need to renew that. We need the federal fucking prison one instead. We we yeah, need we that. Need one. We need we need to sit down one day, me and you, crack a twelve pack, and just start making drops. Because like it's, I've sent you so drops. many, and I've made so many. I could probably look through. I Dude, I had to delete iMovie. Chill. Don't have <laughs> okay, so so this turned to let's crack a twelve pack, <laughs> and you make all the drops for me. <laughs> Whoa, I'm just saying, like, Even God. though you already made them and sent them to me, because oh, I yeah. said I need to steer the ship on the show. Oh, Doctor uh, Jekyll over here completely turned over on that one. What the hell? <laughs> that was, you are schizophrenic, sir. If you, have, if, you have, if you have the fucking software, I'll come to your place. We'll do it. But I don't. I don't have the software. <laughs> you have a fucking Mac. <laughs> I have Mac and I movie, dude. I don't know. I right, movie it's on Mac. It doesn't work. It doesn't just show. All right. I ha- all right. <laughs> Stop. We'll figure this out off air. But we have another fight to break down. We're trying to We spilled joking. another bottle of uh, Buffalo oh, Trace oh, on his oh, laptop. So I movie oh, doesn't work. We're going to show be certified Tom Aspinall. Certified Tom Aspinall. But let's just hope that, I mean, he finds ways to lose these fights catastrophically and people just overlook it. Like, don't ever overlook some shit like that, guys. Don't ever overlook some guy not being able to make it minutes into a fucking physical contest without exploding and being rendered incapacitated entirely. Don't ever just go, oh, that was a freak accident. Really, guys? He walks down the road. He walks to the gym. He walks to with his to his car, from his car, up his stairs, down the stairs, to the bathroom, to the kitchen, and nothing ever happens. On this day, at this time, when it matters the most, something goes wrong. Everywhere you go, there you are. Don't ever discount shit like that. Some people have a cursed black cloud over them. And Tom Aspinall very well may find a way to walk into Marcin Dibur's fist and get put the fuck out. I don't think that day is today. Mark my words, Tom Aspinall will be a Darren Till-like UFC castaway before he is a champion in the UFC. Uh, That's just the facts of London and England and the UK. Um, You know, they had their day. 
they have been too rich in in global domination for too long and now the products that they're putting out are not from a place of struggle look at the, where the champions are from they're from places of struggle that's it's hard to get up and go running when you're sleeping in silk sheets and as a dynasty as an empire they have queens they have kings they have opulence <laughs> over there and tom aspinall comes from a place of opulence he's not going to ever be a fucking sergey pavlovich who comes from, I'm pretty sure, a communist dictatorship, right? Or what? an oligarchy? What, what is it? It's like, he comes from a very cold, sad, miserable place, right? Russia? Very sad and cold, right? Moldova. Not, Moldova? Sergei Pavlovich is from Russia. Eagles. Oh, Russia. no, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of uh, the other Sergei. Exactly. You're thinking of, no, you're thinking of Romanov. No, 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 no. Pivak. Nope. Evac. Who's the grappler? The grappler. Well, you know what all three of those guys, guys. are? The polar, uh, the polar bear. Spivak. Sergey yes, Spivak. yes, 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 yes. You know what all three of those guys have in common? All three of those guys rip Tom Aspinall's fucking head off his body. That's what all three <laughs> of those guys do, okay? Um, so, yeah, I'll pick Tom Aspinall here, but it's with no – I'm not happy about it, and I'd much rather take over one and a half. Okay. If, they, if they'll give it to me, I'll take over one and a half. Oh, maybe. definitely. Definitely yeah. over one and a half. Heavyweight Marcin Tiber is uh, – tough. He's a tough dude. This, this thing's tough going goal. three, maybe even all five. Tom Aspinall stinks. And he wants to really uh, – oh, I can see him afterwards. I wanted to get the minutes in. I wanted to really test my leg and get the minutes in. You know, he's going he's to make an excuse for why he didn't have a dramatic and fun finish and instead went the, went the distance with a subpar regional <laughs> opponent who's fat. So no, no offense to Tiber, by the way. No offense to Tiber. I'm sorry. But he's – how old is he? Let's see how old Tiber is. 36. 36. 37. 37. The age – one year past what – would uh, yes, he's seven years older. There's a reason for that, guys. It's because seven years is actually the exact age range that puts you in a big-time underdog position against your opponent. And he also has seven losses. Seven, seven. The next fight, Starlanko, she's got seven losses too. Seven, seven, seven. We triple just, seven. That means jackpot. Triple seven. So, which means jackpot. It means it means one means that Molly McCann is on the same trajectory as what's his name? Um, Tom Aspinall. Aspinall. Yeah, she's on the she, They want to get her winning they want to have the crowd having fun right so they gave her this lithuanian who's one in four in her last five uh and with seven losses um meanwhile molly's three and two in her last five but you know has some knockout wins is a big fan favorite big time money maker got a new set of teeth on her got a deal with barstool sports um a lot of a lot of incentive for her to win financially follow the money it's molly she's gonna win in the coming event it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a london heavy card guys you got to just trust that a lot of these fighters from London are going to win for no other reason than the fact that they're waking up without a jet lag, without a flight hangover. They got the judges are their fucking mailman. They're, it's their next door neighbor. It's their priest. That's who the judge is. It's going to give them it in a close fight. Um, I don't like that she's got a seven-inch reach disadvantage. I don't like that she's got a three-inch height disadvantage. But the way Molly fights, that actually will be an – advantage because if she can get inside and close the distance she's going to easily parry those arms away swing those big meat cleaver hooks of hers and put her meatballs on Starlanko's uh face and uh meatball day! it's going to be a meatball. Luke, did you know julija Storolenko julija Storolenko fought in Lethwe, your favorite form of combat Ooh, did she and she's from Lithuania. I wonder if Lethwe and the country of Lithuania, I'm using my context clues and I'm using etymology here. And I'm wondering if Lethwe is the country of origin of, if it's Lithuania. Could very well be. And is there all these custom rules bouts are? I have no idea. I'm, I'm trying to figure that out myself. In these custom rules bouts, right? She's, She's arm bar, arm bar. Arm bar. She, yeah, so I think what's happening is they're just matching her up with strikers who don't know any Alika Jiu Jitsu. You know what I mean? <laughs> arm bar. Because I don't see her meatball little me little meatball Molly. She could get arm barred for sure. I mean, she's certainly silly enough to, to make something like that happen, right? Let's look at her losses. Uh Kimura. But that's to the great Aaron Blanchfield, the future champ, Aaron Blanchfield. And then Jillian Robertson, most submissions in like the sport apparently uh, has a really good choke second round. If she can survive a couple rounds, you know, with, with the, those caliber of submission artists, um, she didn't survive very much time at all with Blanchfield. But you get what I'm saying. I, I think that she can uh, survive against Starlanko. Uh, Starlanko's path is, is via armbar. 
it's just not a path I love to chase. Um, you know, you, could, you, you really, if, if you were just an arm bar from guard or an arm bar expert in women's MMA with how frequently it does happen, I feel like you'd be a millionaire by now, but it's just a low percentage move. I don't like to go with somebody who that's their only trick. She's a one trick pony. If Molly McCann can just not get armbar, she's going to win this fight. And if Starlink is going for armbar, she's going to be on her back. If Molly can just pull out and end up on top, that's going to win rounds. She does that twice, she wins the fight. Let's go. Molly McCann. Just hope she's not a huge favorite. She's okay. definitely going to be a huge favorite, so I'm just going to take Julie Aja, Storolenko, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll keep Molly McCann for perfect parlay purposes, but um, I'm definitely going to be hedging on this one heavy because you never know what's going to happen. You can have a uh, Uruguay situation like we had last weekend, just getting knocked out in 39 seconds, or you know, Julie Julija could just throw her in an arm bar Ronda Rousey style when they're dry and finish it. So, yeah, I'm gonna have to, uh, I I guess, triple P certify. It seems like you're kind of going a little bit back and forth on this one, but uh, I'll, I'll go with Molly McCann, uh, even on that Kimura by the great Aaron Blanchfield, uh, New Jersey's finest. You know, she had to really work for that one. McCann toughed it out. She's tough as nails. We all know that. Um, I think she'll be able to work through any wrestling, um, you know, positioning that Stordienko is going to put her through. And McCann has has some good wrestling, you know, in her own right. She's a strong woman. Uh, and I think she's going to have a clear striking advantage um, in this one as well. So uh, I'm not going to love the line that's probably going to come out if I could – take a guess on this one if i could roll the dice yet one more time uh i would say that she'll be a, a minus 300 maybe lukey can check me on that one through his uh his fan duel account over there but uh I, i'm looking at a very 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 high line for molly mccann not really something that i'm really looking into uh parlaying here but the pick is going to be molly mccann the meatball all right all right all right next up we have jai herbert versus Faraz Ziam, the smile killer versus the black country banger. Damn, what do you got in this one? Mm. Um, I've been loving me some Jai Herbert as of late. You know, he's really gone through uh, the rigor here as far as uh, high levels of competition. Uh, what I'm seeing just through through my eyes here in his fights is a, a strong boxer, very clean, uh, Faraz Ziam, I think is, you know, highly talented, very athletic, uh, but not going to bring that, like that, uh, technical advantage that I think Herbert brings into this kind of about, um, I think Herbert's experience and the technicality of his boxing is going to win the day. Uh, we got, I always love this, the Brits versus the French. Okay. This is a age long conflict that never, never ceases to entertain. So Give me Herbert in this matchup. Give me the Brits in this matchup on home turf, three in a row on the main card for the Brits on London soil. Where is this? Uh, yeah, it is in London, England at the O2. So uh, give me Jai Herbert. Uh, Frasiam, maybe maybe a hedge play, right? I'm not as supremely confident in this, confident in this one as I am with McCann and certainly with Aspinall. So this might be your hedge opportunity on the main card. But as for the official pick, yes, I will go with Herbert. What I'm excited for most is that they're six hours ahead of us. So this is going to start nice early. early. 3 p.m. main card, 12 p.m. Yeah. prelims. Doesn't get any better than that. And this will be the right. first weekend in a few that I don't have anything to do um, planned, right? So July 22nd, if anyone's listening, don't make any plans. <laughs> uh, July 22nd because I'm not doing anything. Okay, so uh, we will cruise right into July 22nd with a nice midday card. And I think, you know, we'll we'll do a little wake up, do a little marathon, run, jump, run for like four miles, get a nice runner's high, and then we'll go get some pints, right? We'll drink a oh, yeah. couple of pints with the London audience. Maybe we'll all rendezvous somewhere in public, uh, you know, maybe. Like I said, though, I have nothing to do. That's the thing, right? It's like, I'd love to go hang out with you guys that weekend, but I have nothing to do that weekend. It's like, why do anything? And just, But that's the devil, right? The devil, I hear you. The devil I hear you. inside. Anytime I do stuff on the weekend, the weekend's longer. It feels more fulfilling. I feel like I have more fun. When I stay in and don't do anything, it feels like it just kind of flies by in the blink of an eye. And then, you know, it's like back to work in the next the next week. I need... I need to go fill the time. You need to have adventures, right? That's that's the spice of life. Yes, sir, golfing. 
<laughs> oh, that is not <laughs> golfing. Oh my god. All yeah. Right. Um. Sorry, I'm taking Jai Herbert as well, though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, um, I look at this fight. I think of two fighters who are very technical strikers who are going to stand up, fight the whole time. I think Jai Herbert probably has a little bit more well-roundedness to his game but he's nine years older um mm, i think he's 36 and Farah Saham is 25 vice versa it's 26 and 35 um that's not what vice versa means uh they're both about around the same size jack herbert's gonna have the reach advantage I'm just gonna take the smile killer just to not triple P certify this. I'm not I'm gonna be you. too. No, no, no. I'm with you. I'm switching right now. I'm switching right now because uh, I like that smile killer. It's not that big of a reach advantage. They're the same height, and he is like you said, 26 to his 35. And in a lightweight class like lightweight, I don't think veteranship matters as much. Even though Dan Hooker and Dustin Poirier and the like would have me fucking say otherwise. I guess. I mean, they have the same amount of fights, so it's no veteranship. The guy's 13-4. Yeah, that's fair. And, like, with the knockout that he took from Taporia, you know, it's like where when Smile Killers lost in the UFC, it's been by submission. He hasn't gotten finished like that. I think he can outpoint or possibly even knock out Jai Herbert. He trained at MMA uh, Factory in Paris, France, I believe. And now I think he's at Kill Club FC. I agree. That's so, why I went with him. Yeah. <laughs> um. Sweet. Next fight up, we got Lee Roan Murphy, the Miracle, versus Josh Kulabau. I think this, uh, if there was a prop for fight of the night, this might be it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm liking Lee Roan Murphy here. I know I'm going heavy on the Brits, but um, we got a guy who I feel like <clears throat> is a little bit more well-rounded. Josh Kulabau, I'll give him this. I, I feel like I've overlooked him in pretty much every one of his fights he's always proven me wrong um i gotta do it one more time though man i mean this guy is he's tough as nails he throws some heavy shots and even as of late he's he's shown some grappling chops as well but lee Rowan murphy i mean consummate professional athletic as hell super strong very good ring iq knows what he's doing out there um whether it's striking or grappling. I know his last fight against Santos, you know, people think he probably, you know, may have lost that fight, but uh, a good showing nonetheless. Uh, Stats-wise, he seems to be showing uh, some more volume, um, some superior, uh, you know, takedowns per 15 minutes. I'm going to go with the hometown kid here with Lerone Murphy. Again, another possible hedge situation, Josh Kulabau, I haven't been right in any of my uh, you know, picks with him in the fights, but hard to go against Lerone Murphy. I mean, he's been so good in his UFC career, and he's, just, he's been constant, which is what you want to see in a fight, right? Someone that you want to pick, a guy who <clears throat> is always putting out the same kind of volume, the same kind of performance. Lerone Murphy is, is as steady as they come, so I'm going to go with that kind of a fighter in this matchup. Dude, I really love what everything you said. I mean, I'm right there with you. I feel like I am always on the wrong side of Josh Kweeblau. And if you look at his only loss, it's to a one Darwin Turner by knockout. So uh, there's a sign there. There's something to be said. Yes. Uh, is it don't bet on him or is it do bet on him, right? I don't know. Is it, is it don't? Um, because my concerns are Leroy Murphy had me sweating. He was a big favorite in his last fight. He had me sweating. So if he comes in as a big favorite in this next one, I'm not going to be – so keen on putting him in a shitload of parlays, you know. Um, I do yeah. want to pick him. When I first saw this matchup, I was like, I love picking. I want to pick Lauren Murphy until he loses. Like I think that he is like almost like an incumbent uh, featherweight contender. I think like waiting in the wing to take on some of this new wave. When Volkanovski eventually moves up, you're going to have fights like Arnold Allen versus Lauren Murphy versus Ilya Sporia versus Max Holloway versus you know these uh, Calvin Cater guys like at that division. So yeah, I like uh, the new blood. I like you know how Quiblau went in and got it done against the gun last time even though I picked the gun it was cool really though Melzik was kind of styling on him a little bit in the striking department and then he slipped on a banana peel and got rid of naked choke seemingly out of nowhere that was three months ago I like I like the idea that Murphy fought a better guy than Quiblau last time and won a split decision went back to this gym and said whoo that was a close one we fucking need to improve and he fucking 
went ham to try to get even better. And I think Kuiplau against a lesser opponent slipped on a banana peel and kind of got a fluke victory. And even though he is good and I do respect him and he's way better than people give him credit. And if he comes in as a gigantic dog here, I'm definitely going to take a sprinkle on him. But for the most part, I think the pick is going to be Murphy for me as long as the odds are reasonable. Yeah, I like that take. And I mean, not Aspinall-esque. Alex, what do you think? Yeah, I'm taking Leroy Murphy as well. You guys said it all. I think he's just more well-rounded. And this will be right at – okay, yeah, let's just get get going. Nathaniel Wood, Andre Feely, easy one, Nathaniel Wood. Andre Feely is too divided in his focuses. He's a part of a band, um, and that alone is just too much. But he also has a lot of other things he's involved with. Uh, there's probably some things that we don't know about that he's involved with. <laughs> 33 years old and three weeks. 333, three, three, a lucky number, an indicator, a red flag, if you will, to say stay away on this day. And, uh, and how do I know that? Because he's three weeks and, seven, and six days. So tomorrow he will be 33 years old and one month, meaning that. No, that's the time at the fight. Oh, age at fight. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. So um, that's actually really good to know. I, I didn't even ever notice that. I thought it was age like today. So anyway, touchy feely. Uh, going to lose this one. Does have good wrestling. Could make this interesting. Did beat a really game good competitor in Bill Aljeo. But the loss to Brito by knockout, the eye poke situation, the Bryce Mitchell decision, the Jordan split decision, uh, to me, he's going to dwarf uh, Nathaniel Wood, though. He's 5'11", to his 5'6". He's so – he's uh, – I don't know, man. This actually, now that I'm really looking at some of this stuff, I'm like, well, you know, actually, Nathaniel Wood could get fucked up bad, actually, now. <laughs> <laughs> it really depends which Andre Philly we're going to get, right? Is it going to be a guy who gives a fuck or not? Because look at his record. That's exactly what it'll tell you. It's literally like he designed it to look like an uh, underachiever. You got that nice little draw, no contest situation in the middle that Pineda fucking cried about, right? Then you got the two losses and the two wins. It's like, Kind of beautifully balanced, you know, in a way that tells you nothing, right? Twenty-two wins looks great. Nine losses looks terrible. Which one is it? Truth lies somewhere in the middle. This is an average fighter taking on the prospect, somebody who touts himself as a great fighter, right? What I just think though is that Nathaniel Woods going to have a hard time uh, with the reach and the height um, of a big ass featherweight, and Nathaniel Woods' mo is not to take guys down and wrestle them, so he, he's not going to be able to against Andre Feely. So what is going to happen? He's going to end up in a striking match. And uh, I think Andre Philly can surprise people in this situation. So if he comes in as a big underdog, I'm going to look uh, I'm gonna look at Andre Philly to play spoiler here. <clears throat> I'll even put my balls on the line and I'll just, uh, I'll just go ahead and pick him. <laughs> I'll just go ahead and pick him. How about that? You're still my thunder here, Lukey. Oh, I thought... sorry, Dan. Ah, yeah. I, uh, Going with Feely here, to me, it, yeah, obviously it's the uh, the height and the the reach, but also the weight. You know, this is a Nathaniel Wood who is moving up in weight class. Uh, you know, how many fights has he had at 145? I think only like one or two. Um, I don't like this move up for him. I, I feel like he was doing great at 135. Uh, 145 to me is a whole different animal. I think Andre Feely is going to have some serious advantages as far as the wrestling, um, as far as the grappling. Sure, I you know, I don't think any submissions are coming Woods' way, but I think there's going to be a lot of control time had by Philly if he wants it, and I don't think it's a severe disadvantage on the feet as well. Um, you know, he might lose you know some exchanges there up on the feet through the boxing, but you know, Philly is a big dude. Um, I, I think he's going to, as Lukey said, dwarf. Nathaniel Wood and uh, have some good moments for himself on top of that control time. So, you know, two rounds out of three, I, I don't think is insurmountable for Feely. And I think this is a good spot for him. So um, a guy who's had a lot of experience and only lost to pretty some, some pretty elite guys uh, when you're looking at Bryce Mitchell and Sadiq Youssef. Um, so Feely, I think is the man in this moment. No, 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 no. <laughs> Nathaniel Wood will win. And yes, although we want Sadiq Yusuf on this podcast, probably more than any UFC fighter. Yes. That's not named Joe Selecki. Um, 
Nathaniel Wood's going to beat him. I think he's just way more well-rounded. I think Andre Feely, he's a bit of a punk. He's a bit of a – he thinks he's still a ute. You know, he's still riding a long board around. He's still – getting his gauges longer, taping them up before the fight. He's worried about other stuff. Luke says he's in a band. All right, dude, come on. Get Puff. Puff, Puff Daddy ain't coming around. We're not making no more bands, okay? <laughs> we we, we got we to put a rest to all this other stuff you're doing, Andre Feely. If you want to be a fighter, fight. There's a reason he's 22 and 9. Yes, he has fought some high-level competition. But what have you done for me lately? I'm going with... Nathaniel Wood. Yeah, the highest. And I think he's more well rounded, personally. Highest level of competition. I mean, you got Max Holloway, Yair Rodriguez, Calvin Cater, Michael Johnson, Sadiq Youssef, Bryce. Calvin Cater sucks. Michael Johnson sucks. Wait, I'm not. Yair Rodriguez sucks. Michael Johnson does not suck, nor does Calvin Cater. Bryce Mitchell, suspect nowadays. He, He went the distance with, you know, Cater, with Johnson, took Johnson to a split decision. Like Dan said, Sadiq Youssef, uh, Bryce Mitchell. Those are all decisions. And then you got. The knockout, first round, 41 seconds. You Anderson Brito. Um, and then, it's going to be Nathaniel Wood by my decision. decision. He beat Charles Jordan. Like, that's a quality win. It, it yeah, was you split. guys are sitting here sucking the Murphy's. He beat him. He beat him. It was June of 2020, and it was a split. Three months into the fucking pandemic. Let's be real. Short notice. Uh, suspect fight. Hard to really judge what's going on there. Here's the thing, Dan. We are Charles wrong. Jane Singh. We, we are wrong. Alex is right. Um, no, I'm going to no, no. Bill LJ short little, short little oh, nice yeah, guy. Nathaniel Wood is not going to win. He's Bill too LJ. much of a nice guy. Bill LJ barely beat him. And remember that Bill. Bill was on his. Uh, he had his back taken by Jordan or by uh, Feely. Feely wasn't doing shit, but Bill was punching it right in the face. Remember that? And people were like, Bill should have won the round three because of that, and he should have. And I, th- I agreed with people. Yeah. That's same it. thing with Volkanovski. Guess what? That's not how judges score. It, so he won. That's how it well, is. I'm going with Wood. I'm switching. Sorry, Dan. I'm leaving your ass. That's all right. That's I'm taking right. Alex's car and I'm going home. You're picking all Brits. You're picking all Brits. That like, <laughs> yeah. So no, one of them is no, going to lose. We took one Frost Saham. I, we, we took we Frost both, Saham. We both picked Frost Saham. You're all, right, right. all Brits except for Feely. That's the only first. That's the first fucking American you picked. Okay. All right. <laughs> all right. Let's move on. What's the first American he was allowed I'm to pick? Sorry, I'm because sorry. Because the rest were not in America. The rest of the can, uh, people fighting England, Englanders. Dude, this next fight is a grappler's delight, as the kids say. Uh, Andre Mooney is taking on Paul Craig. Dude, Paul Craig, right? Somebody, again, that you just can't really put your fucking pulse on because you can go out there and look like such a world beater. He broke the champion of the world's arm. This fight right here, this fight's taking place at middleweight. Paul Craig is... a man who currently holds a victory over the 205 light heavyweight pound champ by breaking his arm. So a devastating finish win over a champion, uh, but then two back-to-back losses, one to Volkanov's mirror, his first fight in a while, no time coming back, a respectable fight, you know, a good fight, close fight. But then he gets knocked out by Johnny Walker in the exact way that I predicted on this podcast. I said, Johnny Walker is going to play the bongo drums on Paul Craig's head. And that's exactly what he did. He literally played you know, that game for N64, Donkey Kong. What's it called, Alex? Where you play the drums to the beat. You know what I mean? I have Donkey no clue. Diddy Kong, Diddy Kong Adventures or something. Mm. Ah, ah, ah. And it was it was like he was a pissed off ex knocking at the door like, what? You better give me back my car payment. You know what I mean? Like he was so... <laughs> That I, sounds like it might have happened. I mean, I think I think Paul Craig, uh, four months ago, taking those ringers to the ear, his ears are still ringing, dude. But that being said, Brandon Allen gave Muniz what for. He broke him in that fight, submitted him. If you would have told me Brandon Allen would have submitted him in that fight, nobody was predicting that. Yeah, maybe you predicted Brandon was going to win a decision or beat him on the feet. But of all the ways he could have win, submitting the great Andre Muniz, who has such a stunning grappling record in the UFC – Submission arm bar two years, nine months ago. Submission arm bar, uh, inverted arm bar two years ago. Eric Anders, submission arm bar. I mean, this is like a Honda house over here, okay? So he, uh, Muniz, got yeah, really taken to the fucking cleaners three months ago, but so did Paul Craig. So I think Muniz can really bash Paul Craig here, take his back, mount him, fuck him up. I think Paul Craig's obviously always dangerous, but coming off a knockout loss, fighting a guy who is <laughs> – able to do what you do but better more athletically uh, i think this is a this is a get right fight for Muniz. he gets paul craig uh to the ground and dominates on the ground i think paul craig will be going for submissions 
but Paul Craig will lose a decision. This is going to be an over situation on Tremuniz by decision. Yeah, definitely. Paul Craig is going to be trying to play the guard way too much. And Andre Muniz is just going to be satisfactory in that position and uh, finish, maybe finish him, maybe just beat him up for 15 minutes straight. But you can get him in that S mount and kind of maybe pound him against the cage. And that's going to be going like this. And that's going to be like, fight back, Paul. Yeah, it's going to be Mark Otter, too. It's going to be Mark Paul, Otter. I need you to move, Paul. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And um, he's not going to let Paul be a warrior. I think it's going to be an early stoppage. In fact, I think Paul's going to get up and look confused like Luke thought that Yair was going to make Alexander Volkanovsky look. No, I, I never thought he was going to look confused. He was going to not be confused. He was going to be like, I, I was exactly doing, confused I was, why it was stopped. Like, confused, yeah. confused. What were you doing? It's no. still a level of confusion, you know, just in a different sense, I suppose. Dude, yeah. No, Volk's the greatest. He, he's really the greatest. He, he besides this guy, Volk's the greatest. Um, Jose Aldo. I, 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 I'm honestly at this point, I think he's Jose gonna, Aldo. He's going to beat the shit out of fucking Taporia. Did you see the. Oh, MMA? yeah, definitely. So we got to say, our sister channel, MMA Guru. Uh, he is somebody <laughs> you guys got to get over and watch because he destroyed Daniel Cormier for uh, picking on the UFC way and show something I always tune into because it's nonstop hilarity. They, they get drunk. Uh, DC, basically, the, you can really tell, right, that somewhere in the process of getting on the show, DC has a conversation with you backstage or, like, as you're kind of, like, in the hotel or, and he says probably something to the tune of, like, Hey, listen, here's what you got to do, man. It's real easy. It's real fun. It's real laid back. You, what you do is, you know, you banter, you joke, but when you get a chance to set up one of your friends, you do it. You set up one of your friends, you give them props. But then you can tell some of these guys just don't know the sophisticated artistry that DC is trying to weave uh, when he gives guys like Khabib and Makachev props. Like he's a weaving a sophisticated, sophisticated 5D chess. Then you got Kamaru Usman out there and they're asking him who the, who the five most exciting fighters are. And he's like, just or like you know Dylon, 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 and Dylon. <laughs> no, he was saying Israel and Asanya, and it's like it's like you'll slip stuff in, you know what I mean? Um, just point is, these guys uh, are always kind of marking out. Rosama Yunus, Pat Barry, and I think uh, the Wayne <laughs> Show is a fine place that it's okay to do it he did put justin gaethje on there if that's what you're thinking like training partner people yeah yeah but that's a that's i mean most exciting fighters of course he's on that list but point is i'm just trying to say that that's maybe the one place it's okay you're drinking beers you're having fun it's the one place it's okay to show favoritism bias biasness whatever but what people get annoyed at is like the trying to rewrite history like they were out there trying to say that max holloway is better in the greatest of all time list than volkanovsky and what mma guru had to remind people on his channel was he just said look Max Holloway has three title defenses. Six title fight wins, right? No, no, no. Aldo, Cater, Ortega. Oh, I guess if you don't count intern. Then he lost it to Volkanovski. No, there was no intern. He had an intern. Yeah. He beat Jose Aldo for it. Which was an intern. No, Jose Aldo won the intern off Frankie Edgar at UFC 200. And then he uh, fought Max Holloway and lost, okay. and he had an immediate rematch. So Max took the title from Aldo, beat him in the rematch, then he beat Calvin Cater and Brian Ortega. Point is – Not Calvin Cater, uh, Anthony Pettis. Oh, I do remember that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, beat, he beat Calvin Cater as a, afterwards, you're right. Yes, yes, yes. I was just thinking of people he fought that were the same as Volkanovski. So, you know, his – point is his uh, – it was Anthony Pettis at 145 that he beat in one of his title defenses. No, yeah, no. that was in uh, that was in Toronto, and that was the same night as the uh, Duho Choi and uh, Cub Swanson fight. I remember that card. Right, everybody remembers Duho Choi and Cub Swanson. <laughs> no, dude, that was, it was an amazing ever. fight. That was an amazing <laughs> fight. That's like in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, but I, mean, I, he, I, I will say wrong. this: you guys are wrong. He fought uh, Anthony Pettis it, before he beat Aldo for the title. I think that was an interim belt. It was not. It was just a... Oh, yeah, it was. You're right. Damn. Interim featherweight championship. I know, dude. I'm never fucking wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so then Holloway... Was Aldo a champ when he was fighting Holloway then? How... Yeah, yeah. No, he, he lost it to Conor McGregor. Lost. And Conor McGregor was up at uh, lightweight. I'm looking at it right now. He, he was the champ, too. He beat Frankie Edgar for the belt. 
than he. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, he fought Frank Yeager twice. Uh, UFC 158 and also for the belt at UFC 200. That's why I got confused. I was like, yeah, he fought Frank Yeager. Like, and then he fought Chan Sung Jun, Ricardo Lamas, Chad Mendez. Then he lost to McGregor. I'm like, no, 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 no. That's not what happened. So then he fought no. He fought McGregor, lost back to back to Max Holloway, but the fight against McGregor was for the belt, the vacant belt. They stripped McGregor, and then they gave that belt to. Uh, uh, they gave no, yeah, okay, okay. Now I remember. They awarded- Max Holloway, Anthony Pez, Max Holloway, Jose Aldo, Max Holloway, Jose Aldo, Max Holloway, Brian Ortega lost to Dustin Poirier for lightweight interim belt. But listen, I believe the fight with Edgar wasn't actually for the. They gave him the belt. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. No, like, he already good. had the belt when he when Max Holloway yeah, fought Frankie Edgar. Right, he let's, had let's the belt. It was one of the. It, it, it says it right here on Tabology. Title on the line. UFC interim featherweight championships. Be- belt status before the fight vacant. They stripped McGregor. They made this the belt fight after the fight was already booked. I think. Um, mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so I don't know. Let's just move on. Um, either way, point is Holloway beat Max beat max in more of the fights than he has like, holloway the- beat max all the time dude he beat himself <laughs> dude, right I haven't even, so let's just move on we gotta get going uh all right <laughs> so we're all taking my knees trilby certified my knees yes okay michael did you have anything you want to say about that dan sorry <laughs> <laughs> we covered it we covered it uh the jujitsu is a wash i think my is a better striker Probably get top position. Paul Craig too uh, too eager to play within this guard. Muniz all the way. I'm probably just gonna cut that whole chunk of this episode out. All right, uh, we got, <laughs> probably cut a lot of this episode out. <laughs> we got, a lot of it out. We got Mick Parkin versus Jamal Puagas, the Stormtrooper. Uh, we got heavyweight out of Ireland trains out of the dungeon BJJ. Uh, meanwhile, Joe Stevenson's Cobra Kai is where Jamal, the Stormtrooper, Puagas trains out of. Both Contender Series guys. Puag is coming off a decision victory in the Contender Series 10 months ago to one Paulo Hanato Jr., who is uh, who was 10-0 at the time. And then before that, he was in the LFA. Uh, hadn't fought in a year and a half uh, before he fought, or actually hadn't fought in two years before he fought in the Contender Series, but has since racked up another win against Josh Preezen three months ago. And then this other guy uh, from Ireland – just fought in the Contender Series 10 months ago, got a submission, rear naked choke victory. This one, to me, is open and shut. Give me the American. I think he goes in there, takes this heavyweight down. He's only 6-0. Six and six and oh. I think um, they're both 27. The American, Jamal, is 10 pounds lighter at his last weigh-in. They're, they stack up pretty evenly height and reach-wise. I think if Mick Parkin is going in there, getting some knockouts. His last win in the contender series was a rear naked choke, actually, but the rest of them were knockouts, it looks like. Uh, it says, yeah, let's look. He's got a, well, uh, a wealthy amateur record. Knockout, round one. 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 Round one. Draw. Knockout, round three. One, two, three, four. Five more first round knockouts and two second round knockouts. So I just think Jamal Pogus can take this guy into deep waters and win a decision. So I'm going to go with Jamal Pogus. Jamal Pogus, way more defined. Looks like he's actually been hitting the track. Uh, whereas Parkin looks like he's a fat guy. Ironic, we bring up Frankie Edgar bef- before we bring up a guy with the last name Parkin because he has to be a Parkin's son, you know? Um, but the seven, <laughs> that's Luke's joke. That's Luke's joke. I didn't write that one. The writers are still on strike. So I am as well. Um, I'm going with Jamal Pogus, the stormtrooper all the way. I, I, I really just don't see this pudgy little lard beating, beating up Jamal Pogus. Uh, both of you guys are wrong. Mick Parkin's going to win bigger guy. Mostly finishes throughout his career. Jamal Pogues has not really shown me all that much to care for. Uh, I think this is a setup spot for a new London, England contender. Mick Parkin for the win at the heavyweight division all the way. Dan, that's a Pogues pick. Oh, you have so much confidence in Jamal Pogues. Listen, let's move on. Let's move on. It's a low level fight. Let's be honest. Until it's low level until McParkin shows up 
and shows out and shows what he's made of. And then it won't be so low level anymore. Then you're going to be like looking back on this fight going, wow, I picked against the great Mick Parkin. All right. Well, this next fight, we got 14 and 0 undefeated Daniel Marcos, who just keeps coming off that win five months ago against Simon Oliveira. Remember that he fought the night we were at the Poconos when uh, Hill fought to Shara four five months, two weeks ago, knees to the body, knocked him out second round, 30 years old, taking on 37 year old dangerous Davy Grant. If you guys remember what I said before about that seven year age gap, you'll remember that that's big and significant. So even though dangerous Davy is one of my favorites, even though he's coming off back to back finish wins, against Lewis Smolka and Rafael Sunsal. What do they have in common? Both have eight or nine losses apiece. Before that, loss a split decision to Adrian Yanez, a fight that ages super well. Adrian Yanez is an absolute killer. Uh, Marlon Vera, before that, uh, you know, took him to decision two years ago. Again, a blood and guts war that no shame in the loss there. Then he knocked out Jonathan Martinez. So a stellar UFC resurgence late in life here for the bar owner, Dangerous Davey. But I think this is where the buck stops short. I think this is where he finally gets maybe actually finished. Um, I think the youth factor here, seven years younger, undefeated fighter, dangerous guy with sick, slick striking and a lot of knockouts of his own. I think he finishes Davy Grant, but it's with a heavy heart. I say that because I do love Davy Grant. I'm taking Marcos. I also love dangerous Davy, but you know, you got to look at his last two wins an alcoholic and a 40 year old, not the best wins you can have in the world. I'm going with Davy Grant. On can this. I say real quick, he has that split decision win against Yanez. Yanez, two fights later, loses in the first round to one Rob Font. Now, let me say this. Rob Font was an underdog in that fight, and Yanez was in a very similar situation to Jalen Turner against Dan Hooker and all those previous fights. <laughs> so this happens when a young guy gets sent back, and uh, I don't think Davey Grant is going to do that to Marcos here. Yeah, this is the summertime. Summer belongs to the youth, and it belongs to Daniel Marcos in this matchup. Uh, dangerous David Grant is a little too dangerous, in my opinion, for a fight like this, where you know a guy who's equally as reckless as uh, Marcos here, flying knee knockouts and the like, uh, I think is going to be able to expose uh, Dangerous Davey in this matchup. So uh, give me the undefeated Daniel Marcos Moreno, who I think is going to remain undefeated come July 15th. Dan, quick history question. Why do some of these Englanders have the Union Jack and some of them have the white flag with the Red Cross? I don't know. That's interesting. Why is that? I, I'm asking you. I don't know. <laughs> Sincerely. I, I, I really don't know. That's a, that's a good question, though. Thank you. I love this next fight. We got Mark Case taking on Joel Alvarez. Now I'm looking at this topology uh, chatter and 88% of topology is on Alvarez. One guy says, you know, uh, Joel Alvarez is a winner, so I can see him winning, but I don't want to hope for a sub from the bottom betting a favorite if D1 Jacasey shows up. So, you know, <laughs> Jacasey obviously could come in and wrestle Alvarez. He's from Spain. He doesn't wrestle, right? He's going to let a takedown happen. I think Jacasey by decision is the play here. Uh, I don't think he finishes uh, Alvarez like Sarukian did, but I think he can grind out a decision. Um, but something tells me Alvarez can also knock Jacasey out. Uh, if you look at his record, you know, he lost that decision in that stunner fight against Faziv, had a guillotine lost in the UFC. Uh, but overall, he's never lost by knockout, Jacasey. Um, Alva, Alvarez gets after it and. Uh, I feel like he doesn't have a ton of like he doesn't have any knockout wins at all. Uh, he's got one ground and pound win. It looks like, yeah, chuk, chuk, chuk. he's not knocking him out at all. Oh, stand that, that's what I was thinking of the the Moises situation, the standing TKO. He beat the fuck out of Tiago Moises. That's what I'm remembering with uh, with, with him. Um, so yeah, I just think he could kind of pour it on Jacase and just swarm him and just beat the shit out of him and get the ref to pull him off him. Uh, he's so crazy in this crazy crowd. I think he can really do it to him. But something tells me, case say by decision. Joel Alvarez for me. All right, you're going with Jacase as well, Dan. Dan didn't. Yeah. Be- oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I didn't know if he did his breakdown yet. No, no, but you were correct. I'm going with uh, Jacase here. 
Seems like Alvarez uh, plays a little bit too much on his back, as as Luke said with the tapology comment. I agree with whoever commented on that. Uh, D1 to Casey. He's proven that this guy can actually wrestle, and we know that he's a, a you know top tier competitor with the striking, with the boxing, with the Muay Thai. Um, so I think that that is going to play to his advantage big time with the you know the Taekwondo of Joel Alvarez. You know, stay out of those kicks, stay out of those submissions, and Jacasey should be pretty successful, which he's shown in the past. So can be have fun with your mental midget. He stinks. Okay. Go ah! on. Next fight. <laughs> okay. All right. Next, we got Chris Duncan, not Chris Leroy Duncan, not Christian Duncan, Chris Duncan versus Yanel Ashmal. So, Yanel, Red Fox, you'll remember him. He came in like a wrecking ball, knocked out Sam Patterson uh, with a KO three months ago. And, uh, Dan, you were big on Red Fox. And, dude, when he came out, I could see why. Um, you watch him fight, he's, he is a wrecking ball. He is very dominating. I think he could possibly do the same thing to uh, Chris Duncan. The reason is the problem with the problem is that he got knocked out by Vatislav Borishev you know, he, with that left hook to the body, I think it was. No, in the contender series, it was just a left hook, not the body shot. That was in the UFC. So, yeah, I'm going with uh, Red Fox to get it done again. Give me Red Fox straight out of Israel. Dan, what do you think? Ah, the Israelis are prospering these days. I'm going to continue that prosperity. I know Alex is shaking his head down there. Yanal, continuing with my success for my boy here. You know, Chris Duncan is, uh, he's good, but he's a little too vanilla, in my opinion. He's a little too just okay and a little bit of everything. Whereas Yanel, as Luke said, he's a wrecking ball. He's not going to be afraid of Chris Duncan or anything that, you know, he presents his way. He's going to charge forward. And I think that left hand is going to score another knockout here. Uh, so give me Yanel. See what the line is. Alex, give your wrong pick. Okay, I'm going to triple P certify Sanford and Sons, Red Fox, Yanel, Ash... Ash Moose, uh, yeah, Triple P certifying, but it's going to be wrong. So I'm switching to Chris Duncan. Psych, I'm staying with Red Fox because these guys, they like to they like to put the baluk on me. But little do they know, I can just put it right back on them. Just ride their picks. Ride their picks, and that puts the baluk on them. It gets all the stench off me. I laugh at them afterwards. Triple P certify, Sanford and Sons, Red Fox. All right, next we got Hot Chocolate, Danny Roberts, taking on Johnny Parsons, the slugger not. Johnny Parsons, if you look at his topology picture, he's flexing as hard as he can, and you'll see no abs. Uh, he has one of those bodies that's kind of just, like, not defined and doesn't look like he has those fast twitch action muscles. The muscles built for go, his are more uh, built for, you know, being a slugger not, right? The guy who can take a lot of hits and swing his arms like this, right? Uh, bottom line is he lost in 2013 on the Thailand regional scene. That was 10 years ago. Since then, he hasn't racked up a ton of activity. Uh, he took on Shoney Carter. I remember that guy uh, as 51 and 30, Mr. International Shoney Carter. He's 51 at this point, uh, but he's a legend. Shoney Carter uh, fought this guy back in 2015, got knocked out in round one. Other, you know, memorable names you might see on his record, you won't. Uh, like I said, in all that time, he's only amassed an 8-3 and three record. Granted, he is only 31, so he's been fighting since he was 21. But to get into the UFC, he beat the Black Dragon, Solomon Renfro, uh, from Buffalo, New York. I think I picked Solomon Renfro to beat him when I was just kind of watching this casually one night on the Contender Series. But Solomon Renfro losses to Adam Fugit, Mike Malott, uh, on his record. So that kind of calibrates him a little bit. Got finished by Fugit, finished by Malat, who finished Fugit. Uh, so I don't really see a lot in the name that got him into the UFC. I think Johnny Parsons gets beat here. I'm going to go with hot chocolate in a get right fight in his home country. Uh, he's 18 and seven. He's five years older, not seven. And yeah, he's got two losses this calendar year. One to an old man in Trinaldo and one to Jack Della Maddalena by knockout six months ago. Six months is an appropriate time to take off. He did get knocked out by a flying knee from Michael Pereira, Michelle Pereira, sorry, uh, four years ago. And he's got a knockout of his own against Salim Mimadayev in the UFC. I think he gets a knockout here. Give me hot chocolate by hot finish. It's crazy how different the body types are in the welterweight division. You can have a guy like Michelle Pereira versus a guy who's kind of like skinny and, you know, like hot chocolate. But I'm going with hot chocolate, too. I'm going to keep it short, sweet, to the point. Dan, what do you think? 
Yeah, I'll go. Uh, have. It's a shame to triple P certify Danny Roberts on this one. This is a guy who's a bit of a head case, finds ways to lose fights, but at the same time shows a lot of skills. Uh, I think in a hometown fight, in a get right fight, a guy who should have superior striking in this matchup, he will win. But my God, do not put it in any parlays. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a fight, like we said, hometown, get right, opponent making his debut. Uh, athletically, he's going to be the favorite. So let's move in to the next fight. Penny Kainzad taking on Ketlin Vieira. Uh, Ketlin Vieira coming off a split decision loss five months ago to Rocky Raquel Pennington. Before that, a split decision win against Holly Holm that she lost, uh, in my opinion. Before that, a decision win against Misha Tate. Uh, and before that, decision loss, Siana Santos. Uh, she also... In the last, you know, has only fought five times in three years, but yeah, she beat, she beat Sarge Banks too. Penny Kai inside, uh, lost to Rocky Raquel Pennington as well. She beats Lena Landsberg, she beat Alex Davis, Sarge, and Betch Kaya all by decisions. The play here is the fucking over, obviously. Both these ladies show us every single time they fight that they're going to go to a decision. However, um, no matter who you put them against, you can put her Vieira against a octogenarian coming off the sofa, coming off her with her knitting needles, and Misha Tate. And she ends up uh, taking her the distance. You could put her against Holly Holm. She loses the fight and wins the fight. You could put her against uh, who was her last opponent, where I thought she did actually decent. Raquel Pennington, yeah, a fight that people think she might have won, and no, she loses. So it's like really hard to get a read on Ketlin Vera. I can't stand her. I'm going with Penny Kynes. I don't care what the odds are, but at least she's coming off the win. Objects in motion, stay in motion. Penny's cuter, and she has not pissed me off nearly as much. That's the fucking criteria for the lady fights in the Bantamweight division. So we're going with Denmark zone, Sweden zone, cutie pie, red panty night. Let's go with panty kinds on. Copenhagen, please bring me home. I'm taking red panty night, panty bonsai, kanzad. Uh, I'd love to go with panty kanzai. She was certainly a pandemic <clears throat> hero. Something tells me Kent Levera is going to take this thing home. I think she's got better experience. I think she's got more power. I don't think the speed of Kianza is going to overwhelm her all that much. Um, I think Vieira is the play here. I'll give you that one, Dan. I'm going with my heart a little too much. So since I switched to Alex a couple of them, I'll switch with you. This one, I'm going with Vieira. We've still got a couple of weeks to think about all these guys. Uh, so that's why these picks are raw, rough, you know, to the point. Um I'm going to go with Vieira here. I'm going to switch. I'm going to, I'm going to align with Dan here because I just think he's kind of right in a little bit of a way, but it's just not a fight you want to really want to bet on at all. So if Kai Zad's an outstanding underdog, I will be taking her because I do think it'll be close and I do think it'll go over and I think it'll be a decision. And I think in this, this economy, with these judges we've been having lately, now we're going to a place we never go to in London. Yeah, the judging's going to be all over the place. It's going to be shitty. So give me the underdog in all these ladies' situations. But for now, uh, it actually kind of feels dirty going with Vieira, but I'll, I'll do it for Dan's sake. I'll, I'll side with them on this one. Well, yeah, this is going to feel even dirtier, Luke, because I'm going with Mac Mud. I'm chilling in the mud because this is Mac Mud Meridolf versus Brian Bam Bam Barbarina. Brian Bam Bam Barbarina, listen, the only guy that's ever been in a motorcycle accident and keeps fighting that I'll bet on is Sean Strickland. And every time I bet on him, he wins. Every time Luke bets on him, he loses. And every time he bets against him, he wins. I'm going with Mac Mud Murdochom off. I'm gonna I'm gonna get right in the mud on this one. It's dirty. It's bad. He's on a two fight losing streak, and you know Barbarina is training at Jim O with Joe Selecki, but Mac Mud is gonna pull this out the mud. Even though he lost to Gerald Mershar, who sucks. Well, let's go mud, and I'm also going with uh, Mac Mud here. His last two losses were against grapplers. Uh, when we look at Gerald Mirshar and Kyle Barallo, uh, I think uh, Mac Mood striking is going to win the day in this matchup. You know, it's one of these kind of uh, I wouldn't say low level, but kind of in between. You know, Brian Barb. Barbarina has uh, has shown some quality wins in the past, but obviously he's aging. He's up there. He's never been a guy to really crack the top 10. Uh, I think Mac Boot is superior in the striking, which is where this is going to be taking place. So uh, give me Mac Boot. 
All right, so Triple P certified, Mahmoud Murdakhanov. Okay. Yeah, I didn't give my pick, but I won. Oh, 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 did you not? Okay, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> I'm fucking idiot. Well, while you guys were talking, I was looking up when and where Brian Barberina has lost his 10 losses. You know, some of the names are good, like Gunnar Nelson, Dos Anjos, Brown, Luque, Leon Edwards, Colby Covington, champions, right? But then you got, you got guys like Jason Witt somehow beat him, too um on there and then you look at where he was you know he fought in canada he lost he fought in uh he, he doesn't travel well uh last time he fought in london was against gunner nelson he got armbarred in the first round i think makman murdoff hands a delicious beating to brian barbarina and finishes him in this fight trophy certified makman murdoff let's move on two more fights to break down for you all and then we'll hop over to the patreon for the real talk uh bruna brazil taking on shauna bannon Bruno and now you're going to get my Sadiq Brazil. Youssef imp- impression right here. You're telling me Mama B wants to fight against the whole nation of Brazil? I'm sorry. Let's go to the next fight. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, Mama B out of Ireland. Uh, Shauna Bannon. Do you guys see what I'm seeing? <laughs> All I know is I need to do a little bit more research on Mama B. And... I don't know if it's to make the decision on this fight, but I'm going to have to do some more research, even though she's a little bit out of the age range for me. You want to hear Alex? Got some crazy uh, sex hair going on. <laughs> the Bannon. Yeah, it's it's definitely a mop for sure. Uh, looks like somebody should spin her upside down and sweep the sweep the the kitchen with her uh, over there. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm kidding. I actually really do like the haircut, and I don't want to talk about a woman's appearance. It's actually a really good haircut, and I like it. <laughs> she's an Irish cutie pie. Like, what are we been putting on? What have we been acting like uh, she's not an Irish cutie before? But the a little spe- sweet potato. If you want to hear Alex make a joke about uh, Bruno Brazil's nickname, tune into the Patreon. Uh, but Denise Gomes knocked Bruno Brazil out two months ago. We know Denise Gomes packs a punch. Uh, she did pack a punch last weekend. We just saw that, right? Denise Gomes. Uh, she came in there last weekend, knocked out Yasmin Uruguay. First round, 20 seconds. Didn't even matter for for Denny. Uh, so, um, yeah, two months ago, getting knocked out cold. Right hook to ground strikes. Uh, give me Mama B. I'm going to take Mama B. The special one, you ain't that special. You out here getting knocked out and shit. <laughs> I'm going to go with Bruna Brazil here just because, you know, a wise man once told me, you look at the ladies, you see which one isn't as attractive, and you bet on the one that's not as attractive. Both these ladies, very attractive. So it's hard to hard to decipher. It's hard, I don't know what's left, what's right. I'm going to go with the one who's a little bit more special. I'm going to go with the special one, Bruna Brazil. <laughs> Give me Bruna Brazil in this matchup. Uh, not much to say. I mean, her opponent, Sean Abandon, has gone to decision against ladies who are one and two and not all that much impressive as far as their resume goes whereas uh brazil has at least had some wins uh via ufc competition has fought ufc competition in her um you know pre-ufc record so i just feel like the experience uh the finish ability all lean towards bruna brazil um that's all i can say pretty much about this one uh yes She'll be certified Bruno Brazil. I'm switching to Bruno Brazil. Yeah, Luke, that was a sim pick. You know that was a sim pick. Who is Bruno Brazil? Like, isn't there somebody with the last name of Brazil, like Donna Brazil or something like that? Isn't it's it? the name of the country, Luke, in the in the language that oh, is. Dan, what am I thinking of? In no, Portuguese. you are. There's a. It's a political figure. Okay, Donna Brazil, an American political strategist, campaign manager, served as the chair yeah. of the Democratic National Committee. Yeah, Donna Brazil. What's the controversy with her? There isn't there some bad thing that I, I don't know. She um. She gave away the questions to a debate to Hillary Clinton. That's against- what I'm thinking of. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And now she's working for Fox News. Yeah, she's Remember like that? the uh, she's like the liberal on Fox News. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. So, all right. Well, I'm going with Bruno Brazil. Let's hope that she doesn't sneak any tips to her up to. to her up <laughs> I don't know. Let's just hope that special one is uh, or special. donates her whole entire uh, <laughs> life's work to uh, Neymar, <laughs> like like the president of Brazil or whatever the fuck he was, the, the Brazilian billionaire. Yeah, that was a good. Yeah. Though. He wanted to give it to a guy he liked. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if any of you rich PPP boys are out there and are planning um, on dying soon, 
let us know. Put us in your will. If, if you give us like a house, like a, like a farmhouse or something or a place where we can just go and just like exist, uh, that, grow food and just gamble the night away. That'd be all. That'd be so great. So, yeah, if you got any property, uh, we would love to inherit it. OK, moving on. Um, Rafael Fiala versus Daniel Barres. Now, I'll be honest, all the other fights heavy, heavily researched, um, know a lot about all the fighters. This one didn't have time for Rafael Fialo, Pastor versus Daniel Barres. I'm looking at these guys for the first time, new eyes, but just off of what I'm seeing here, I'm going with Rafael Fialo, even though he's coming off a loss, even though that loss is two months ago and it's by Muhammad Makayev's submission or naked choke. That must have been a landmine fight. He has a knockout win, left hook to ground strikes, coming off a contender series. Let's take a look at that Fiala, the, the uh, Makayev fight real quick, right? So my man Makayev, he pulled that Rudy Kachuk off in the third round. That was a fight Makayev was losing. That was a fight where Makayev got his leg ripped apart, if I'm not mistaken, right? That was that fight. Yeah, that was that fight, a fight that he was actually about to lose. So if I take a look at that card, that Edwards versus Usman 3 card, Yep. Okay. So he was always in there against Makayev. That was always his opponent, but he get, he was a massive dog and he gave him a big time fight and almost even beat him. Makayev remained undefeated after getting his leg mangled and ripped apart. I'm going with Fialo. We're sending him back to London saying, hey, great fight. Let's get you back in there in London and now you can fight again. Fialo, younger guy, going with him. He didn't lose to Carlos Hernandez. Carlos Hernandez stinks. Fialo. Fialo. Stay with Christ. Go with a pastor. Meet somebody. <laughs> Hernandez, Hernandez does not stink. He's only got one loss uh, Two. in the UFC. In the UFC. Okay. Fair. fair. <laughs> yeah, Trump's going there. Trick me. <laughs> uh, he doesn't stink. Yeah, I'll also go with uh, Hafel Filo. Um, you know, it's guys my most got a lot of card. It's my most confident pick of the card. Yeah, I mean, guy's got a ton of finishes on his record here. Uh, you know, the first fight of the night, do with it as you will. Um, I'm going to go with Philo here. I think Philo and Muradov, right there. Keep it simple. Oh, and I guess Brazil is trophy certified as well, but I don't – I mean, those the first three fights, parlay them. Philo, Brazil, Muradov. Then you go with a little hot chocolate, a little Yanel. You skip the J.K.C. Alvarez fight. Marco is a trophy certified, but you skip him as well. You don't want Daniel Grant spoil it, Davey Grant spoiling your parlays. You got Muniz. He's trophy certified, but you don't bet that one. He lost this when you punish him. But I'm just saying, Fialo, Brazil, Murdoff, Hot Chocolate, Yanel. Pause. Way to beat. Way to beat. Way to beat. Way to beat. And then just like see what's up. You know? Wait, no more beats. Let's give our final thoughts. We've been <laughs> we've been in this right, job for two My and a half call. hours. Off the bottom. <laughs> Go with me. I'm a by the top actually. Uh, Rafael Fialo, Bruno Brazil, Mahmoud Muradov, Caitlin Vieira, Danny Roberts, Yanel Azmaus, Mark Jacase, Daniel Marcos, Jamal Puagas, Andre Muniz, Nathaniel Wood, Leroy Murphy, Faraz Yam, Molly McCann, and As Tom Aspinall. Uh, <laughs> ass. Ass Tom. We got Ass Tom and all. Uh, no, no, no. and then we got uh you know that's it that's all you know okay saying. now Show my picks right. that's <laughs> <laughs> Aspinall. Give me order. Give me order one way or the other <laughs> Aspinall McCann Ziam Wood Muniz Murphy uh Pogus uh Mar- Marcos is that his name Marcos Marcos Alvarez uh, Ashmus, Roberts, Kainzad, Mahmoud Murkanov, Brazil, and Fiala. Danny Boy. Going with Tom Aspinall, Molly McCann, Jai Herbert, Leroy Murphy, Andre Feely, uh, Andre Buniz, Mik- Mikel Barkin, uh, Daniel Marcos, Mark D1 to Casey. Yanel Ashmus, Danny Roberts, uh, Ketlin Vieira, Mahmoud Muradov, Bruna Brazil, and Rafael Vilo. And the trophy certified picks are Aspinall, McCann, Murphy, Muniz, Marcos, Yanel, Roberts, Muradov, Brazil, and Fialo. Thank you for joining the show, everybody. As always, 
Get in that Patreon for the extra episode every week. We're going to go in there right now and break down home versus Bueno Silva yet again. We're going to go through that card. It's a short card. We're going to hop in there. We're going to talk about Terrence McKinney. We're going to talk about Austin Lingo, Holly Holm, Albert Duraev, Norman Dumont, Asamend Azatar, all the fights that you want to hear us talk about in the Patreon. And if you sign up for a full year, you get a discount. And Dan gets all the money that comes in in the month of July. As a hey. big congratulations for Danny B getting married. Thank you all for joining the show. Thank you for coming along the ride and for supporting us. Big two-hour episode for you here, breaking down a great card. Get ahead of the action. It's going to blow up quick with all those Londoners on the card. But we know what we're doing. We're going to make big money. Let's get it all back. And then some. Thank you. Goodbye. Take care. Godspeed. <laughs>